Okay, so All right, so it's 10 o'clock. Let's begin the July meeting of the Robotics Society of Southern California. My name is Ben Partita. Uh, you've joined here with uh, all of our, some of our, our members. Uh, we have two talks today. Uh, Steve, he's going to be giving us a talk on all of his great creations, Arduino stuff. Uh, and he actually brought a big old drop off that he will be demoing later. Uh, I believe at 11, Trish is going to give a talk. Oh, it's um, it's her friend, this guy, Walt, uh, who is a, a maker um, and uh, <clears throat> going to talk about the um, uh, the supply chain supply issues chain, that's right. with uh, all of the hobby electronics. All right. Yeah. So. Uh, once Steve gets back, we'll begin. I wonder if it, because everybody's usually used to uh, Alan posting the link. This time I posted the link and it looks like only. Yeah, you posted it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's on. It's on our Google sites. Yeah, I got it. Um, Steve, you ready? Oh, yeah, sorry. All right, well, take it away, Steve. Um, let me see about sharing screen. Mm -hmm. you know, I do that. At the bottom of the screen, it has a uh, like a green button, like right in the middle of the, of the toolbar. It's in it's Zoom. You gotta go back. Go back. Oh, I know, in Zoom. Okay. Yeah, here you go. There you go. Share screen. With the share hold desktop, so that's great. Really where is this screen? This is where I want to share. Well, if you want to go window, oh, I click share. Right. right. Just if you only want to share that, if you get, you'll have to switch if you want to switch to a different window, though. You'll have to stop share. Oh, that's good. Okay. Hello. My name is Steve. Craig, I'm from Santa Monica, Mar Vista, Venice, West Side area. Uh, I'm new to the group. Um, I think my stuff's more machines than robots, um, but close enough. Robot adjacent, I guess. <laughs> uh, I make all these machines for kids and um, This is my crane. Uh, and it's mostly I attract three to 10 year olds. I do the farmer's market a couple times a month and I have a booth there and that's, it's very popular. And then I also do birthday parties and events. Uh, this is my crane and I did all the welding on it. Um, it's powered by Arduino. It's got a joystick. Is this one mine? No. Uh, behind that um, participant thing is the control. So the kids can control it over here. Is it like a like a game controller or how do they? It's control a joystick it? and, oh, and a couple that. buttons. Oh. Yeah, move that participant, participant thing. I don't know who that is. There you go. Yeah, here's the, uh, there's a joystick and um, a claw open close and then an up and down switch. So it, this goes in and out with a motor. Uh, it goes up and down and it goes left and right. And the kids, the kids can control it all over here. Um, originally, I, I did all the welding too, by the way. Uh, originally, I had an electromagnet over here and it would pick up cars and the cars were pot metal. So I had to glue a washer on the roof because <laughs> <laughs> they weren't magnetic. Hmm? Your scale, how, how big is that thing? I have no idea if it's tiny or huge. It's about five feet tall. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh yeah, wow. it's about, it's about like this. Uh, wow. 
Oh, so that stuffed animal is in small. So <laughs> yeah, I, I oh no, that stuffed animal is pretty big. You know, he's <laughs> you like, can't tell he's it's like this big. big. <laughs> so you know, a kid, I would say like a five-year-old, you know, his head would probably come to about here. Well, yeah, you can <laughs> tell because that's it. Yeah. You know, this is pretty Little low. Table. You know, it's it's uh, it's the height for you know like a five to seven-year-old. Yeah. So I had an electromagnet and I had to glue washers on the cars because they were pop metal. But what was happening is the kids would take the car all the way to the top and then drop it. Um, and then, you know, sometimes it'd be toddlers walking around underneath. So I was like, okay, it's not gonna work. So I switched to this claw. This used to be a, a, a toy, uh, like a, a, you know, you stick your hand in it and it, and it just has a mechanical grammar uh -huh. thing. I put two servos in, in there and it worked right away. Uh, and it's amazing, you know, the, the claw machines at the bowling alley, they're fixed, you know, but um, mm -hmm. a three-year-old could do this one. Uh, yeah, so Arduino joystick, three motors, up, down, left, right, mm -hmm. in and out. Here's a video. At a birthday party. Wow, now you can see the scale. So he's big. She's probably like 10 or so. So that kind of gives you an idea of the size. So that's basically it, it at the birthday party. What age are they able to start working the controls where they where they get it right? <laughs> uh well, from doing this, I learned that um Two-year-olds don't make the connection that a button or control is doing something. They just want to move the button or control. Mm. Once they hit three, they make the connection that um, this is moving that, you know, yeah. uh, which I learned just from doing this. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, at the farmer's market, you know, they just sort of line up, you know. Uh, I don't really operate it. And, uh, they just kind of come and figure it out. Um, so yeah, I mean, two, three year olds, you know, but they'll just come and move yeah. their controls. Yeah. But um, I, I've seen three year olds actually pick up a stuffed animal and put it in the, in the box. Yeah. This is a noise bot. Um, it has an ESP32, and the ESP32 has touch capability. So I just took all these metal, um, I just cut these metal things and uh, attached a wire underneath. So it's all touch operated. Um, it's got six solenoids, two drums, one, two, three, four, four bells. Oh, and then this thing's run by a motor. And, uh, you know, I'm not a musician, so uh, that's why it's noise. <laughs> it's not music. So it, it's not music. It's, it's a noise. Oh, and the horn. I got rid of the horn because um, they, just kept, they just kept breaking and they're like 10 bucks a piece. So <laughs> I got rid of the horn and replaced it with oh. the uh, is this push button only, or do you have like a sequencer so you could do uh, pre programmed sequencer? You could. No, it's all just touch. That, you know, he's he's just touching these metal things, and it's, it's um, so it's just random noise. It reminds me of the group. But there's, there's a little kid working in, you know, with all I have to do is touch the. Uh, it reminds me of the uh, the Grinch stole Christmas, the great big who cardio schnooks or whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> in the in that animated show, they have uh, something that makes noise like this. And if you've ever seen that holiday special. So here's a little kid, and um, you know, they can work it just because all they have to do is touch the metal and but yeah, ESP32 has touch, it, it, and uh, I don't know, it's probably got like eight touch pins. Mm. Something like that. Mm. Mm. 
So that's a nice bot. Now, how can we use the ESP on that and the Arduino, or do you need both? Oh, I, it was just laziness. Um, I needed I needed a motor um, for the um, the one thing, and I was going to connect it to the ESP32, and then I was like trying to figure it out. And then I was, you know, uh, Arduino clone is three bucks, right? So I just added it. Yeah, yeah. And so it was just kind of laziness. Um, but yeah, I could I could run the motor on the on the SP32 as well. But is there anything on the you needed the ESP32 for that the Arduino could not do? Touch the touch the touch. The Arduino doesn't have touch capability. Oh, you mean it isn't? Isn't so? Well, I mean, plugging in your... it doesn't have it, you know, off the shelf. I mean, maybe you could do it. Oh, not off the shelf. No, but off the shelf, no, you can't do it with an Arduino. But ESP32, you know, it's built in. All you need is a wire. Oh, that's it? Yeah. yeah. This is a donation bot. I have a laser cutter, so I cut all the parts. Um, I made this. I wanted it to be uh, fun to give me money. <laughs> So that's what this idea behind this was, because the farmer's market, it's all donation based. So um, you put a dollar here. This clamp thing is a switch. So there's two pieces of metal. Uh, so when there's no bill there, um, it doesn't do anything. But she says something. She says some snarky comment. These are speakers. <laughs> all the electronics is over here. It's got a Adafruit soundboard. You put the sounds on the board. Um, it's got a servo claw that takes a bill. One motor for up and down, and one for left and right. It's got a bell and LEDs. You see. <laughs> so she just puts it in her purse. <laughs> you, you are a good kid. <laughs> <laughs> so she says, "All there's all these, you know, it's all random. Everything she says." So, um, <clears throat> but anyways, I made this as a it's, it's called a donation bot, and I made it for donations. But then the kid, you know, he puts a dollar, and then he's like, "Oh, I want to see it again." <laughs> so they, kind of they don't want to keep feeding it dollars. So then I added paper and a pen. And down here it says, you know, draw a picture. And I've been asking for pictures of aliens. So I got this huge collection of alien pictures. I could make a book out of these. I should post them on here. But anyways, I got the, this collection of aliens from from just these kids. I would have done a slot so that they can't get the dollar back. Yeah. Rather than. <laughs> I have a, another one I'm going to work on. Um, yeah, I think. But yeah, they'll reach in here. There's a sign in here that says, you know, keep out or something. But they, they're they pretty good about it. But, you know, this has become a hit, you know. I mean, there'd be a crowd of kids just drawing pictures and just running this over and over and over and over. You can always put like a little trap door on there. When the, the clock comes in, it opens the door. Yeah, yeah. And then the belt drops in. But as soon as the arms start moving away, the door closes. Yeah. Well, this is quite sophisticated for me. I mean, I, um, you know, I'm self-taught as far as the programming. So this took a long time to program. Um, you know, and then it's got limits, this limit switches, you know, even if it's simple, it just adds a lot of wire, you know. It's got an up limit switch, down limit switch, and left and right. Mm. Uh, oh, this is a yeah, this is a lazy Susan up here with a gear on it. <laughs> so oh it rotates. Yeah. It, it, it like that. Yeah, oh, right, right, right. The That's top right. rotates. Yeah, show it again. <laughs> Oh, right. 
Okay. <laughs> is there a, there's if, a if there's no the bell? Huh? Is there a servo to hit the bell? Uh, oh, there's a solenoid. I didn't list it. Oh, okay. There's a solenoid that hits this this desk type bell. And then this is this is a switch. So if there's no bell there, uh, oh, it doesn't grab anything. And she just says some snarky comment like, you know, give me a dollar. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or not, maybe not that snarky. She says something like, you know, or you can also give me a dollar. Oh. Um, <laughs> or uh, or yeah, don't touch my cards or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, out of proof uh, okay. audio board. Does that have pre-programmed voices, or how did you get the email voice and all that? Oh, the film voice I got online just uh, found a text to speech. Mm -hmm. And just typed in what I wanted her to say and got the recording. And then the Adafruit board um, has USB on it. You just upload the files, mm -hmm. uh, and then it, and then it's triggered by the Arduino, uh -huh. and it can, uh, you know, there's like you can do one after another. You can do random. Um, you know, there's all these different different types of triggers, I guess. Well, how many uh, how many sentences can you do? Is there a finite number? Like it's the memory size of the audio board the biggest one there's a two a two meg and a 16 is it a meg or you know it must be gig yeah so yeah you can only you can only fit no it must be meg right remember because i remember i had to put like uh dot wave files were kind of big yeah so i you know because i had like a dozen of them so i I put a dot O G G or whatever those are. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. those are like more compressed or something. Oh, and the board will do O G G format? Yeah, it'll do wave MP3. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I was doing wave files just from a single pin of a nano, uh -huh. but you just don't have enough memory problem mm -hmm. to store your wave files. Yeah, even this is really not enough memory if you want a lot of files, but um and it's not it's not that cheap. It's like 25 bucks or yeah, that's why I wanted to do it with the pen on the net. 30 bucks. And then there's one that comes with an amp included. Mm. And then there's there's one where you need a separate amp. What were you gonna say? I say I bought a uh, also a um a, a speaker uh board, but it was cheaper than that, and it was like a little add-on to uh I think it's yeah Arduino compatible. I'll I'll find that. Uh, oh, like a feather. Yeah, it's just a little. I forget what it was, but it was maybe it was um, uh, yeah, Adafruit or um, or DF Robot, but it was a little just a little add-on board, but it wasn't twenty-five bucks. I haven't got it used yet, but it they do have. Um, all my point is is if you look, uh, you can find these little add-on um audio boards that vary in price and memory. Yeah. This and one it, yeah, take wave files and stuff. This one seemed to be uh the most storage space. Mm -hmm. You know it'd be nice if they made one that had an SD card and you, you could just put as much as you want on it. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to find I mean I guess you could do it with a Pi, but This is the XYZ bot. Um, again, I'm I'm really into randomness and scribbling, you know. So um, this has got three motors. It goes back and forth this way, X and Y this way, and th this goes in circles, which I call Z. Um, he's blocking it, but um, it's got a nice uh, wheel wheelchair joystick, which is probably about the only joystick that's kid proof you know because <laughs> they make them you know <laughs> make them, yeah it's kind of like that you know because they make them, they make them they're sort of industrial you know? yeah whereas you know every joystick i've tried is um it's always breaks but this one's this one's pretty beefy <laughs> uh let me see Oh, and then this also has a camera. Just because I had the camera in stock and I don't really draw things out. So 
as I built this, I realized, oh, you can't see what it's doing. <laughs> so I put a little camera here, and then I had these two monitors in stock. You know, these are the kind that go on the back, back of a car seat. Oh. Uh, and I just added that. And recently I got a monitor that um, you can see outdoors because these, mm -hmm. you, know, you can't see these outdoors. And they make monitors that have the brightness that um, it'll work outdoors. Uh, oh, there's the, there's the joystick mm -hmm. that came off of wheelchair. And I try to use, you know, reuse parts and stuff. Uh, this is mostly, um, you know, the linear bearings, uh, Amazon, all the gears and stuff I cut on my laser cutter. I have, a, you know, I have a table saw drill press standard and, you know, I can make anything out of metal or wood in a laser cutter. Oh, that's, and I have a 3D printer too. But that's, that's almost like a manual 3D printer right there. <laughs> you know, you yeah, right there. Yeah. <laughs> but the joystick. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a big roll of paper back here. And, <laughs> Um, paper becomes quite an expense. You know. What do you use for the paper? Do you get um, like the printer paper of the old days, or is there another kind of? I found a roll of paper. It's not cheap, but it's like thirty bucks, and it's like you know, big roll of white paper. This thing. Mm -hmm. uh, is that like what is he at the butchers? You know, sort of like butcher paper, but I bought it at uh, some education store. Oh, it's like one of those art papers where this is like an easel and a roll of. Like a roll of yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think it's paper one of towel. those, but it's it's, small. Paper towel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's like it's real cheap. But <laughs> it's like a thousand feet or some, you know, so it lasts it lasts me quite a while. But yeah, I, I've made machines that uh, used 18 by 24 paper, and it was just like forget it, you know, because I would run it, and even when a kid wasn't there, I'd be running it, and I'd just be burning through all this paper, and it was getting expensive. So now I, I tend to go with the economics. This is a mar you know, like a marble machine. Um, I'll never make one of these again. <laughs> oh, I love marble machines. It, it took like three months. Uh, so it's pretty simple, you know, it's just got three motors. Oh, I had another marble machine I made that was, you know, this big and um, uh, and kids loved it, but they'd walk up to it and they'd say, I want to play with this. And I would just say, well, you don't really play with it. You just watch it. So what I did is um, I added a crane to it. So now it's an interactive machine. Here's a little joystick and a switch, and it's got an electromagnet. It doesn't use marbles, it uses you know, steel balls. Mm. Um, so I guess ball run is the correct. I always call it, I used to call it a marble machine. I'm trying to call it a ball run because it's not really marbles. And it's got an electromagnet uh, machine. So that turns the electromagnet on. That's just the RC joystick. Mm. And all the track is laser cut. And every part you see, I probably made it like 10 times, you know, because yeah. it's all trial and error. Oh, that's a drill bit. That's an auger drill bit. Mm -hmm. I thought of that. I bought the drill bit at Harvard Freight. Oh, that's that's great. Great. Oh, look at that. That's oh, pretty clever. Yeah. My elevator. How did you make? Is that uh, also laser cut? Yeah. Yeah, I just cut a spiral and then spread it out. Wow. I love these type of machines. Yeah, that's like that's my favorite. Well, those, are, uh, <laughs> those, are drum, oh, those are drum pads. That's a fun that's But awesome. that black thing was a, a drum pad. Are you trying to do like an Anna music thing? Oh, that would be another, that's another project. Oh, it, uh, this is a drum pad, you know, just from the trash. Oh, yeah. I, I found a, a kid, so it just kind of bounces drum. off. I just use it as a trampoline kind of gun. 
Do sometimes they fly off the balls on the floor or do you catch yeah, them mostly? It, it took two months to make it. <laughs> and then it took a month to get the bugs out of it. The bugs, yeah. And the bugs were balls falling, falling off. off. And my studio had balls they were wearing. <laughs> I love that machine. That is really. As a half inch um, steel balls. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're half, they're big. Half inch? Uh, yeah, I actually, I, I tried to go bigger at first, and then I was just like, this machine's going to be huge. Yeah. So now I use half inch. You get a hundred of them on Amazon for pretty cheap, like 30 bucks or something. That was like a science educational this uh, exhibit when I was growing up that had <laughs> it had like this big big one at the Museum of Science in Boston, like a huge the size of the room, whatever. And it had but it had little LED readouts with kinetic energy and potential oh, energy. Wow. So it would go up and show you the conversion from potential to kinetic. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. Big, like that's like four thirty years ago. So uh, it's a long tradition of those anyway. <laughs> These are just simple machines. Uh, this is just a number <laughs> box. These number counters. Um, my dad was a taker and he had a, you know, he was kind of a hoarder too. And he just had the coolest garage. He had all kinds of electronic stuff. And I would just go out there and look through boxes and stuff. And anyways, there's these, we, you know, we sold all the stuff in his garage at the TRW swap meet. Um, and we, made, we made a lot of money too. Because he had some cool oh. stuff. Uh, anyways, these counters were from one of the things I saved from his garage. Because as a kid, I always thought they were cool. And uh, so I finally decided to do something. And this is just really simple. I just basically connected a motor and a belt to it. And then I put a speed control on it just so it's sort of interactive. This is uh, mom needs a brake bot. So I took apart five like five uh, uh, annoying toys that make noise, you know, now the sound's all in the chip, you know. So I just took a, you know, I just took apart the toys, about three to five of them, put it all in this thing. And then this, this is just a rotary, mechanical rotary switch that has, I guess, 12 different connector things. This is, I think this is from my dad's garage too. So these are all just counting up. And this is just makes a bunch of noise. But these toys, you know, they always end up in the trash because they drive the parents crazy. That's why it's called mom needs a break, you know, because it's like all these. And there's even a fart, fart sound in there. So <laughs> the kids love that. Oh, and the number thing says our numbers look good. <laughs> Just the uh, <laughs> one of those we show it's too like, hard to hack those things. And... Yeah, the the little sound chip, you know, usually you have like a thing of like epoxy on top of it or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I just, you know, about five toys, I just took the the guts apart and you know added a switch. So mm -hmm. really, really kind of simple thing, but This is solar powered water fountain. Um, the toddlers love this. It's it, this is very simple too. It's just a a solar panel. <clears throat> the plastic marine ones are better because I had a glass one and it just broke just from transporting it. Um, and then it's got a pump down here and a hose that sucks the water up, and no controller. So you know, on a hot summer day, this thing's probably putting out twenty volts. So I'm, Overdrive in the pump, so the pumps only last so long. <laughs> yeah, you know, pumps ten bucks, uh, but you know you can set this up anywhere, and um, you know the water just circulates. Uh, very very simple idea, and you know one, two, and three year olds, they just love the water. Oh, and you know I put little rubber ducks down here and. Could you, could you put a regulator in there to save the pump? Like, uh, you, you know, yeah, you mean a little solar that, that uh, goes well, like, like, uh, like if it's puts out 12 volts and or that's what the motor needs, 
Just yeah. put a 12 volt regulator in there and that'll keep the so it never overdrives the pump and you can save right. Or you could, yeah. Basically, solar panels they come usually what you do is you get the solar panel controller, the solar panel connects to it, and then you connect it to a battery. And the solar panel then is just basically keeping the battery top off, okay. and then you run your load with that. That's the correct way to do it. Yeah. But um uh, yeah, I didn't do that. Uh I just <laughs> overdrive the pump. <laughs> How big is that panel? It's like, um, yeah, 16. It's, you know, it's a marine solar panel. It's nice, it, you know. Uh, I mean, it needs a lot, it needs direct sun, but, you know, on a day like today, you know, it, it put out 20 volts. Mm. Mm. And I've been using solar panels at the market. Um, I do have one of those controllers and uh, I, I, I clap a solar panel to the tent thing and I run it to the controller and it, and it um, you know, charges the battery I'm using for the other machines. So, you know, that's kind of handy, you know, because everything is, uh, everything is battery operated because I'm outdoors. This is another silly idea I had. I think it's the receipt bot, sort of like, you know, when you go to CVS and you get the receipt that's, you know, 10 feet long. <laughs> um, so I just had this idea in my head, which is, you know, what I usually do, um, to make a receipt bot. And it basically has two servos and it just scribbles on a receipt. And, um, yeah, and then there's the LCD down here. I did, again, I got lazy. I put an Arduino here to run the motors and the servos. And then I put another Arduino here to do the LCD. I probably could have done it all with one. But, you know, I use a lot of clone uh, Arduino. So, you know, the clones are like three bucks. And... How do you design frame? Hmm? How do you design wood and frame? Do you use all the fusion? Oh, all stuff? this? I, yeah, I just, I'm pretty much trial and error, you know, um, the way I don't really make any sketches or anything. And this is all cut um, on my laser cutter. Laser cutter will do boxes and there's like a, there's like a website and you just put in the dimensions of your box and, uh, uh, and what kind of um, joints you want, you know, finger joints. And then it spits out uh, a plan for it, which you can uh, edit in, um, in, I use Inkscape, which is, you know, it's basically like uh, uh, open source for Illustrator. So it spits out an Illustrator file. And then there's also a program for gears. Um, so you just put in how many teeth you want, you know, do you want uh, spokes, do you want, uh, you know, all the, all the parameters, uh, and it'll spit out a file for the gears. And then, you know, the other, like maybe all this square stuff, uh, and this, I, you know, I designed myself and then escape and then cut it out. But, uh, yeah, laser cutter is awesome for making parts. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of like it better than three, 3d printers just take forever to print anything. Yes. How, how big is your cutter? It's a hobby size, so it's it. The bed is a uh, twelve by twenty. I can't do big things. How many what? Forty. Forty. Wow. How much? How much do those go for? They're really expensive. Um, the this one was five grand, but I um, I inherited some money from my aunt, and we didn't know my aunt had any money, but she had money. Anyways, she gave me. A, like four thousand dollars or something when she passed, and it was on sale for thirty five hundred at the Maker Fair uh, in uh, California. No, oh, good for you. So I got it for thirty five, which is still I think God I didn't spend five grand on the thing. I mean I don't think they're worth five grand. No, no. I don't even know if it's worth thirty five hundred, but that's what they go for. They're expensive. I'm hoping they get down to nine nine nine. That's my sweet spot. 
This is a, I have a full spectrum laser. It's there in Las Vegas. And I think they're probably maybe the, maybe in the top five. Well, that's the I think Epilogue's probably the best. Epilogue is the big one, right? That's the best, but they're, you know, they're like eight grand or something. <laughs> Yeah. I think I saw it for six. Well, that was a few years ago. It probably went up since then. Yeah, it's still a lot. But did not, how did you? Oh, I didn't run this. Yeah, go ahead. I probably, I'm overdriving this server on something. <laughs> uh, and I got to work on that. But basically, just scribbles and, and feeds a receipt uh, underneath. Whoa. All right. Underneath this wheel is a another wheel, and that's what's feeding the paper. And then you know I put uh, a speed control on a DC motor. Well, I guess the motor, yeah, the motor's under here. Yeah, can you check the chat channel? There might be some questions. Uh, there wasn't any questions. Just uh, oh, you're you checking it? it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've been looking at it. Carl has uh, had a bunch of stuff. We have some suggestions for. Uh, I don't know if um, people can speak to us because I haven't heard a peep out of anybody. Well, was, I uh, first somebody sent a message. That's me. I, well, I, that's really good paper drive. That's paper drive is hard. Is it hard? Oh, it's really hard. <laughs> I used to work oh. on big equipment in the Navy that had paper feeds. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, maybe because yeah, it's it wishy, but it has the slightest piece of line. Oh, that's you know, true. and it goes crazy. <laughs> maybe just because this is just small paper, it's not so bad. But this is a rubber no, they soft have to, rubber. They have to get those motors aligned correctly because both wheels oh. aren't aligned correctly. That motor is going to get that paper is going to get squirrely as hell. Oh, I see. <laughs> is that two wheels <laughs> or just one? Well, there's a rubber wheel on top, and then there's a uh, I'm another wheel underneath it oh, okay. on the other side of the paper. So it's pinching the paper. And oh, yeah, there has to be. You can't guide it off with a single strip. And those two wheels, their alignment has to be dead on. Uh, it's, if it ever yeah. breaks, take your time. You can get a micrometer and measure that stuff out and then run the paper for a distance and see how you did. Um, yeah, I haven't had much trouble with this really. It's yeah. just, uh, but that may be because it's, you know, it's not that wide. It's only like what, yeah. you know, receipt. Well, it isn't too much that matters. It's the distance it goes uh -huh. because the slightest alignment, misalignment over time makes a really huge difference. I think this one's a little better because the, the drive wheel is at the very end. <laughs> it's just pulling it. Yeah, it's literally like pulling toilet paper yeah, out. Yeah, it doesn't matter though. Trust yeah, me. but if you have <laughs> any sort of wide shear, it's going to push that paper to one edge. Well, this this has like you know two posts here, so it keeps it. I guess it keeps it centered. And your roll has the two uh, side yeah, panels that I, keep it aligned. It's, it's there. Over it's, the time I worked on those machines, I developed a real admiration for the guys who support copiers. <laughs> <laughs> I have an old uh, IBM Selectric. Parts, I'm not, you know, they've been sitting on a shelf. I'd love to do something with that, you know, with the big rollers. Yeah. And then I think, I think there's. If you look really there. carefully, you'll see that where the, the little rollers are uh -huh. and the big roller, <clears throat> there's a big heavy metal plate on the chin that supports that to make sure they stay aligned. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I think with bigger paper, it'd be a lot better. <laughs> right, because if the, if the rollers misalign, it's <laughs> <laughs> paper jam. <laughs> One degree makes all the difference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These are my draw bots, and I've actually brought them to show you guys. Um, but basically, uh, <clears throat> this is also version four. <laughs> version three was a disaster. <laughs> I, I tried putting bumpers on it, and uh, yeah, I was trying to make it like, because um, the kids would run the thing into the wall and then walk away, and then the motor would burn up. Oh, so and I was using like cheap motors, so I now I use a beefier motor. This is probably the best version. Uh, so it's got each one's got a sealed lead, sealed lead acid battery, and then um, it's all wireless too. So uh, I use Arduino Nanos, and then this is this RF24 radio receiver, but. 
I had so many problems with this because you know, Piggy, you, you got to um, put jumper wires between this and the Arduino. And it was just a pain, you know, because I was having bad connections. So I found some Chinese ones online that that are a nano with the with the RF thing built in. Oh, cool. <clears throat> so I put a link to that. In the... I actually went back to our. Uh, I mean, you could still find them, but I went back to Amazon, and and they don't have them anymore. But they're around. Did you have to write your own like serial UART? Is this just raw? IO. Uh, okay. Actually, I just found the code online and and sort of copied and pasted as far as the radio stuff goes. Well, the low raw would probably do the same thing, right? Yeah, but that's expensive. These things are like, you know, probably if you buy a bunch of them, they're probably like two bucks. And this guy, uh, I don't remember, but very, very inexpensive because it's a Chinese yeah. nano. So each one has one of these guys and a motor a motor driver, the 298. And then I put two nice gear motors in it. Um, yeah, and then they, they each got a pen. They both just scribble at random. <laughs> and then underneath here is another one of these guys that's the transmitter. So there's an Arduino under here and then I got a battery back here that powers that. And these are joysticks. Um, they're RC joysticks, you know, from a controller. I just, but I'm only using the one, one axis, but it's left wheel, right wheel, forward and back. And um, so now it's wireless. When I first made these, you know, I was, wasn't very sophisticated. I actually, they were wired. <laughs> I had just one draw bot and it had one of those uh, one of those things of wire that, that has a bearing in it. Um, what do they call them? Slip, slip, I forget. Anyway, it was it was kind of crazy, but it was wired at first. So yeah, I went, but now I went wireless. Uh, yeah, and then the joysticks are um, you know from an RC controller. Oh, and then the paper, you know, I was complaining about paper. This is just a roll of brown paper from Home Depot. You know, it's 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. So I can burn through that. It's no problem. I mean, I'd, I'd love it. That's really neat. I'd love to have white, but um, mm -hmm. to find a roll of white, I mean, you could probably find it, but, you know, it'd probably be pretty mm -hmm. costly. And, you know, you just, with all these kids and stuff, you just turn through it. <laughs> How about a whiteboard and markers? That we just I tried it. that, and um, I had a lot of trouble with erasing it. I would put a, a pen on one side, and I put an eraser on the other side, and I I went round and round, and I I couldn't get it to work to where I liked it. I mean, it was fun and it was neat, and dry erase markers they leave a real ghost. Yeah, I mean, you really, you really need a human with some elbow to 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 wipe it off, and then eventually you have to use rubbing alcohol. And it, it's, <laughs> yeah. If the ink sits on there for a long time, you have to use rubbing alcohol to get it off. And so, yeah, I went that route, <clears throat> um, and I used sharpies at first, and um, that got expensive and messy. Um, so now I just have ballpoint pens. Uh, I'm going to have a video, but I, right. I have no, right have the show, but you got the real thing. <laughs> I got the real thing. Ooh, and somebody joined with the console, too. Oh, is the ballpoint pen where the caster goes, and that's just the weight that pushes it down? Yeah. Oh, and I put a spring in the ballpoint pen, so it's yeah. got a little shock in there. Yeah, nice. So, what kind of batteries are you using in those? These are 12 volt sealed lead acid batteries. Or I... I'm thinking of going to LiPo, but I don't know. They just scare me because they burst into flames and you know, the kids shit. around. They used a lot of these batteries and toys. So these seem to from here. Really they're good. Not this yeah. And then also with LiPos, I'm finding out that um, you can only drain them to a certain point, I guess. Yeah, you, you can use 90% of it. 
Yeah. But then she'll let us and you can only use half. And with that, I would need some oh, sort of monitor. So I would, you know, yeah, so I don't know. Okay, that that I think so. But I did buy some. So basically, you know, uh, it's left wheel, right wheel, go forward and back. And I didn't put any obstacle thing, you know, again, I was kind of lazy, so you know, I just let the kid run into the wall. <laughs> I mean, I can put obstacle avoidance on it, but uh, you know, it would just add to the parts. Like I started putting bumpers on it and, you know, I was going to have the bumper be like a switch to stop it when it, because I put cheap motors in it. They would do this. They'd run it into the wall. Uh, this one stops now because the joysticks go back, but it would sit there and it would just burn up the cheap sure motor. That screen burn up the wheels too. <laughs> yeah, so... Oh, and, and uh, at first, also, I had um, rather than DC motors, I had continuous rotation servos in there, and that oh, worked no, pretty they good. Can't, they can't see it, but I would just burn them out. Oh. I would just burn them out. What's that? The servos generally don't have enough cooling to do that continuous rotation. Yeah, I, I would have to replace them. Yeah, they would last quite a while, but I'd have to replace them every once in a while. The kids will find out what burns them up. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, they were like 15 bucks, you know, sort of like 12, 15, cheap ones, like 12, 15 bucks a piece. I have a question about that. These, uh, these are big, you know, 12 volt, um, like gear motor batteries. So. I finally oh, yeah. went, you know, industrial grade. <laughs> so I don't think these will burn up, you know. And then the pen's got a uh, a spring, and it's just a spring from. A, I think it's just a spring from the pen. From your, from that yeah. So it's got a little shock, but you know the pin falls out. But the chassis I made with this um, with the laser cutter. And all the electronics is in here. I can't get to you. It's, if you've got a slot and you're showing me, and you lose a wire wrap, the whole thing burning it so it doesn't fall out. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a piece of metal. Yeah. And then, you know, the battery's heavy, but it acts as a weight. <clears throat> okay. So you want to that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah. That is just true. Well, that's how we're right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> What? But it, it went back to your um I really I think that's right. Right. So that's basically all my machines, okay. really. Does that does that look like a standard servo transmitter or are you is there like a digital signal that you're decoding? You can do an app later. What's that? The board? No, on the transmitter. Oh, it uh it uses a radio signal. So the Arduino, uh, you know, you code it so it runs the motors, and there's a um there's a you know it, it doesn't have enough power to control the motor, so there's another board that's a um uh L298 that will run two DC motors. So the nano runs the two motors and the joysticks control it. And um, there's a transmitter here that's connected to this guy. There's wires that go down there and the wires that go up. So this Arduino under here is transmitting a signal to each of these, like this one to the blue one and this one. But, but is it a digital serial communication or is it the standard RC it's TWM? A, it's RF. It's just radio frequency, 2.4 gig. Mm. So it's digital. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't know if it was the standard RC, <laughs> like you fly a plane, which is a PWM analog signal. Oh. Okay. Oh no! This is the uh, this uh, just one four. And so you basically have to write your own serial. Yeah, you said what yeah. you did. How it works. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. you, did you did you write that or did you find that code? You said? I yeah. found it. Yeah, I found it. And uh, so it was code. I'm, I'm your code? still the cut cut copy and paste guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but so I mean, one Arduino with the same thing talking to another Arduino with the same board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you have to tell like you're you're just telling it. You know, here's the you know forward and here's the yeah. You, know, you have to you decide what to send, right? You're right, right. But you, the, the underneath that, you don't care. Right. And um, basically, the only thing that differentiates the two is, you know, this one's using, you know, say, pin one and two, and this one's using pin three and four. So uh, that's the only thing that differentiates the, the two. I don't care right now. I have the code on on GitHub if anybody's interested, but that's uh, that's basically all my machines. Yeah, press it down. Thank you, thank you. This yeah, yeah that's down. really nice. Um, what do you charge for birthday parties? Oh, that's a reboot. Uh, it <laughs> starts at like three fifty, and but I have a spin on machine which I didn't put in here because I I mean I made the box and I do spin art but I didn't invent it or anything I just made the box that's very popular so I bring the spin yeah, art the cranes disconnected um oh, the and the draw bots or the noise it's box not I bring a canopy and a table and it's quite it's a looks like <laughs> and I do uh you know school events too on the pan your focus <laughs> Like this is a this is an amateur operation. <laughs> we don't get paid for this. Yeah, I have some calls. Okay, so I'm not have an event for you that's not for kids' parties, but for something else. Mm -hmm. I have some similar projects I've taken to shows, and I gotta say I'm impressed with the size of these, just moving those projects and the parts must be a, a challenge in itself. That's Carl Sutter. Yeah. What was his video question? Oh, he was saying, he, he just he was saying it's a, um, there's a lot of bulk to these, uh, these, these parts that you have to move and bring to an event. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we, you know, we're, Carl's done, you know, and several of our people in our club are bringing things to events like maker fairs and, uh -huh. You know, if you do it every weekend or something, that's a lot. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm I'm pretty good at building. So, you know, both those things come down, the sign comes off, um, and it's all creative packing, you know. Mm. Uh, and I have a Toyota pickup, and I somehow cram all this stuff in my pickup. But, yeah, I bring... How many of those? <laughs> I bring a crane, the marble machine or the draw bots i bring this solar powered water fountain the noise block and maybe a two a couple of the tabletop ones steve do you have a do you it's, have a, a youtube demo of that drop up that we could put a link up well, he, he posted the uh, uh, i do i do probably um i just didn't bring it and i'm in the process of shooting new stuff because and rebuilding my website so so the reason i didn't bring it is because you know i brought the actual draw box so. okay can, can we run it during the show and tell so that we can actually film it oh sure yeah well oh, they yeah. didn't get a shot of it yeah they were asking about uh, if they could see a oh they didn't it. see it okay no. but so that yeah. one we'll run it again uh it's better if you have two people running them each one. You know, it's hard to do by yourself. We'll do a proper demo of two people. Yeah. 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 Show and tell, guys. Yeah, that's fine. And then the rest of them are at the top of the chat. We posted several YouTube links, right? For other the other ones. I did. Or is that Walt? Oh no, that's yeah. Walt Perko. Yeah, that's yeah, that oh, I, I, well, um his uh, his webpage, Steve's webpage is posted in the the link for this event. Yeah, I is. posted it. it it's is. on our website. Oh, cool. I'm in the process of putting the pictures on, on there are very I'll old, so them. I'm in the process of putting up new pictures. And I'm I'm going to add a page of videos as well. Okay, you don't have videos up there yet. Not no. yet, no. 
Uh, it's a work in progress. Yeah, Steve's machine empire. <laughs> oh, and the way I got the empire was um, I was at the market and a friend came up and said, wow, you're growing. And without even thinking, I said, yeah, it's an empire. <laughs> so that's how I got the name, you know, it's Steve's well, machine empire. Well, that's cool. How do you uh, do? You just rip the paper off underneath that. Yeah, picture? yeah, it gets full and just pull it out and tear it off, recycle it. Oh, yeah, I just found these now online. Seven bucks. Yeah. Express. Yeah, they're great. Well, let's post them. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't need no range, much range, but I think they're good up to like 100 feet or something like that. Maybe it's 100 meters. I doubt it's 100 feet. If it's uh, 802.11 Wi-Fi, if it's the low energy, it's uh, about 800 feet. If it's like regular, it's up to 900 meters. Is that what that L stands for in that? I'm sorry? Part? Is that what that L stands for in that part number? Well, it's not Wi Fi though, it's just, it's just that's RF though. Yeah, RF. It's 2.4 gigahertz wireless transceiver module. Uh, yeah, it's sort of, uh, I don't know what the L is, but. No, with a pin circuit antenna, so that limits it a little bit. The which one? Oh, that little, little antenna. Can you hack that and put a better yeah, antenna? antenna? There's other boards that actually have a little antenna on them. Oh, there's XB. XB is another one, I think, but they're a little more expensive. Were you even giving me a fee for the advertising? Huh? <laughs> Didn't get a fee from Toyota for the advertising? <laughs> oh, that's because I'm a Toyota guy. I just saw oh. it. Back there. Yeah, they, they you say, tell them, hey, I'm on the website. Give me some money for my advertising. They say Toyota right here on, <laughs> Sorry, right on the, the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, using name brands is usually uh, people kind of don't do it without permission or they get, want to get paid. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just thought, you know, I, I'm used to seeing that, that that Toyota on tailgates on trucks. So, you yeah, know, these are trucks. <laughs> I just thought, you know, oh, yeah, I'll just put it on there. Yeah, so Toyota's getting free advertising. <laughs> And yeah, so is Arduino. And, well, that goes at pretty much every maker uh, <laughs> presentation. Or yeah, a, I have an yeah. Arduino sticker, and uh, that's a Maker Fair. The Maker guy. I heard Maker Fair died because of not because of COVID, but because of the organization. Oh yeah, they they went bankrupt before, really. Oh, oh is that? It, it it's just that I, I was at the last. One in, in you know San Mateo and and then but well, there's still these satellite ones, but right. that one was enormously expensive and had you know they they weren't paying they weren't charging the amount of money they really could pay for all that uh, you know, renting out a huge fairgrounds and having all that right. and they and it was I don't know how I don't remember uh, it wasn't very much money to go to it but um, yeah they. And they also have a whole publishing thing, the Make Magazine and all that, that survived. But the, uh, I guess the whole money model was not very good. It was more people, hobbyists that love this, but don't have huge amounts of money. Right. So it was yeah. great. I, I went 2017 and 2018. It was fun. Yeah, it's, I, I, yeah, I hope they can get it together again. But there are these smaller ones that will continue to exist. They're all independent. Yeah. organizations LA I, Orange County have cropped up uh, I back. did San Diego and San Diego had it was there for a few years and I don't know what the status is but I did San Diego a long time ago I'm the one what is it out east I don't remember which it was on one of the college campuses that was pretty nice but it was small yeah those are might have been a mini maker fair yeah Oh, the LA one. That's where I saw you. At the uh, DCLA or or at the, uh, the the one we just had this year, right? At the um, that was the LA Maker Fair at the park. Yeah, the, the outdoor, outdoor park. park. The outdoor outdoor park. park. What's that park yeah. called? Dukes. That's the um uh I forget the name of it. 
but yeah, just north of downtown LA. But anyways, that's what turned me on to this group because I saw you. Okay, there. that's where you went. And then I came to one meeting and you know, good. So we we did get some uh, <laughs> successful <laughs> outreach at that event. Like, after like yeah, and I'm five hundred business cards and I'm from the west side, so you know this is like a different country in LA. And maybe, uh, oh yeah, oh so you drove yeah, you're driving late. even though it's only thirty minutes. Of drive. Drive. All right, oh thirty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's uh, thank you. It's oh, 11, take a little break. 11 o'clock. Uh, I believe uh, Walt is next. Walt, all right, Walt is there. You're 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 wrapped up, uh, Steve. Yeah, I'm done. All right, uh, so our next speaker, uh, will be, I believe, Walt. Hey, Ben. Ben, I'd like to introduce Walt and give some framework for what we're going to be doing next, if that's okay with you. Sure, go ahead. Okay, perfect. I just want to say um, this next section uh, is uh, I owe the Port of Long Beach some thanks for this, as well as a number of other things that I'm going to be doing. We do it as part of a nonprofit group we called Makersville Services, and we support makers and their projects in uh, helping to make activities, events, and places and uh, where they might help to um, get some presence. I know Walt from quite many, many years ago when he lived in Long Beach, and he um, he actually provided me with my first introduction to 3D printing. He had this enormous 3D printer because they were enormous at the time. And he, and they do go out of calibration when you move them, but he took that risk and he brought it over to the sea base, which is where I had a space at the time where I was just beginning to get the space and shared with a number of sea scouts, not sea scouts, just uh, boy scouts at the time. So uh, thank you, Walt, for having introduced me to 3D printing. And at the time, he was already working on what he calls, if I say it right, the Robotorium. The Robotorium. L Robotorium. L Robotorium. Mm -hmm. And I recently um, rediscovered Walt on LinkedIn, of all places, and he's working on I think it's an extended version of what he was doing at the time. So thank you. And Walt, you can take it over now. Thank you, Ben. We are sponsored in part by the Port of Long Beach. I think he said that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Well, um, I, I still do some 3D printing, but mostly just uh, develop, you know, to 3D print the prototypes of the different designs of stuff I make. But um, basically, the last several years, I've been working on an education program that's for anybody from about five years old up to 125 years old. And it's based on the RoboGut STEAM education program using the RoboGut circuit board. And the, the RoboGut circuit board is basically like a really intelligent breadboard. Now, the intelligence comes from the fact that you can pop this module off, put an Arduino at mega chip on there, or a PIC chip, or a BS2 stamp chip, pretty much any computer chip you want that'll fit into either the um, 15 millimeter wide or seven millimeter wide, up to 28 pin sockets. Um, I think I got this one's got a shorter chip on it, pick chip on it. Um, I got a whole box full of stuff from prototypes. No, I guess I don't have one handy with um, skinny chips on it. But anyway, <clears throat> you know, you can pop almost any microcontroller chip. Or just put a TTL, you know, like a 7400 chip on this thing and use it for experiments. The reason I designed this board was because I designed 
a cartoon character, which is actually on my t-shirt, Billy Bob. <laughs> and, then, and Billy Bot was just an idea I got from being in other online computer clubs where people kept asking, where can we get robot cartoons? So I started, I started thinking, well, geez, a lot of weird thoughts go through my head while I'm working on this stuff. So I started making cartoons based on a lot of that nonsense. People like the cartoons. I've got over 700 cartoons published on my webpage. And, and then um, after publishing all those cartoons, some, I, a few people asked me if they could get t-shirts with Billy Bot. So that's why I designed the t-shirt like this. And then I thought, well, it's kind of a neat t-shirt. So I bought a couple myself and started wearing them. Now I wear them all the time. But people, people um, started poking me in the stomach saying, where can we buy that toy? And I was thinking like, well, it's kind of based on real robot components in that, but I hadn't really designed it as a make your own toy thing at the time. But after a half a dozen people wanted the toy, then I designed the 3D printed printable toy. And um, the, first, the first few iterations, You know, work, I've worked out all the kinks to get everything. And um, then um, I was thinking like, well, it's a neat toy, but I don't want to get into the business of selling toys. And while I was de developing that thing, I had it, it was impossible to find any microcontroller at the time that would fit inside the little body. <laughs> I'm so quiet. <laughs> I, got a, I got a complaining parrot in the background. <laughs> anyway, so after looking all over online, not being able to find a small enough microcontroller board to fit inside the Billy Bot, I decided, okay, I can design one. And I started designing the RoboGuts board. And the, the RoboGuts board, it's it's pretty basic you got your your breadboard section here then you got the uh, this is a little audio amplifier over here above that is a speak jet chip and the speak jet chip allows you to program phonemes into the chip send phoneme data to the chip so it can talk and sing in pretty much any language even klingon um, so you know that way instead of recording stuff on mp3s and like that this way the education program takes kids through how to control a lot of different electronic components and sensors and motors actually five different types of motors and um a little bit about the mechanics of things you know by building the x projects they're they're learning and understanding some of the mechanics they're doing phonemes, so they're learning how to use phonemes to make speech and actually singing. And then they're doing arts and crafts by 3D printing the plastic parts. And the first X project is basically designed like this, a, a little box that just snaps together. And so you, you, you 3D print the five parts pretty 3d print the five parts two wheels bottom top and a face and i've got i don't know how many face designs lots of different face designs and it all just kind of like snaps together into a nice little or, or six parts yeah there's a little tail skid there too and then the robo got circuit board just slides inside you make your connections out the back comes a uh, power switch and a uh, battery thing. And then this big hole in the back is so you can plug in to reprogram, reprogram the robot as you want. 
and I've done different different sized robots. Mm -hmm. So like this one, this one actually, I went to a competition for um, I forget what one of those Japanese competitions where the robot you can, it has to be autonomous and it has to push the other robot off the table or cross be the first one to cross the line things like that and this little guy as dumb as it is actually managed to uh, official rules win the contest the unofficial rules of the club they let the little kid win which was okay with me but uh, anyway I don't know if you can hear that, but he's on. Um, oh, he's. I think the wire came loose again. They get bounced around in the um, box all the time, and uh, one of the wires gets loose because I don't. I don't bolt them down. Yeah, it's. He's supposed to be singing a song say a little speech and sing a song. I got another one here. I think this one's nailed down better. Can you hear that? <laughs> That's a little patriotic song I wrote back in the uh, late eighties <laughs> that it was singing. Um, the Billy Bot also talks. I don't know what's on this one. Anyway, you could the, the all these videos are online. I got hundreds of videos, demo videos on YouTube. I put a bunch of links at the top of the chat. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole idea is that people, anybody, pretty much any age, if you can read and write, they're just starting to read and write, you can do these lessons. The, um, let's see, let me go to screen share. Or like, and then there. So there's my main website, r2pv1.com. That means ready to play version one.com. And I got, I'm in the tech briefs contest again. I get in there every year because a bunch of, I used to work at NASA and a bunch of friends at NASA keep bugging me to get in the contest because they think I should, I should at least get in the top 100 things or not. Um, you know, post or whatever, but um, actually I've never won or even got into the, I think I got into the top 100 one time, but anyway, I get in every time. So that's that link at the top. But the idea is that with the RoboGuts STEAM education program, my goal is to get other people that are in robot clubs or even not in robot clubs, but just our maker, homemakers in that to open up their garage or their living room or go to the public library or a boys and girls club, whatever, and start what I call an L Robotorium shop. So they get to use that name if they're selling the RoboGuts circuit boards. So as long as they're selling RoboGuts circuit boards in the lessons, they can use the L Robotorium shop name. And the idea is that I'll sell them the RoboGuts circuit boards at a dollar profit for me, they can turn around and sell it for like $3, $5, $10 profit. And all the lessons are on, on the website uh, as the experiments, all the X projects that I've developed and to show that they work. 
are also on online. So like the X projects page, it shows them the main chip that I start with is the PICX 28X2 module. Because from everything I've looked at, this is the easiest way for young kids and even older adults to get started in robotics. The, the programming is so much easier than C programming. That, and they're learning structured language programming because the libraries are inside the basic program rather than just calling some external library they never see. And that's how they learn about the sensors and motors and the code that the, the, the programs use. So it goes through how to set up power on the chip, setting up a common cathode LED, three color LED that's common anode, just so they learn that there's two types of LEDs, momentary switches, just going through a whole myriad of different lessons. And um, by lesson six, I think, is when they start playing music, just bit banging a port. But eventually it goes through a couple of different um, other devices, including like an MP3 player, which I really don't recommend those things <laughs> myself. But um, then there's the Parallax EMIC 2. And what I what I find the most versatile actually is the SpeakJet chip. The old, there's only one other chip other than the SpeakJet chip that I would recommend, but it, my RoboGuts board isn't designed for that yet. And that's the SoundGen chip. And it's designed by the same guy that designed the SpeakJet chip. He's expanded the SpeakJet chip to a larger chip with more pins and more capability. But each of these lessons, the idea is that you just look at the picture, put the wires on, jumper wires on the board like in the picture, download the code, program your thing, and the experiment runs. Then after, after you've done a bunch of these lessons, you start to, you start to learn you know, if you read the code and look at it, how it differs from one experiment to the next, you're starting to learn and understand how the how the code works and how to write basic programs. Then for for the speech, I have the um, the phrasalator program, which is what you use on your computer, and I made made these little boxes and with a USB cable. There's there's different variations. This is the first version I made. It's real easy. So you can jumper the audio output from here to the audio input on your computer. And then you can hear as you're developing speech with the software, you can hear what you're doing on the on the computer. I should have plugged mine in. Um, so you're just there's a demo video showing you just type in this screen. Once once you get your COM port set up, you, you just type in here, you click on these buttons to get the different phonemes. And you can type words in here. And if it doesn't say the word, then you have to go up here to the phonemes and build the word up. There's a large dictionary for the words and with the phonemes already built up for them. But um, you can make you can add more words to the dictionary yourself by just saying um, save. You know, you do a word in here and then say save, and it'll save it. If you do a phrase that you like, you can save the phrase. So it's real easy to use software. Great for developing developing speech and singing. And so I go through all these different lessons, just tons and tons of lessons, different different kinds of, I got, I think three or four different ultrasonic sensors in there, different motors, stepper motors and DC motors. But then after you've done a bunch of the lessons, or I actually recommend just going through all the lessons. First, after you do all the lessons, then you can start getting into building on um, X projects page and building 
the X projects and I got all the FART files online to go get the 3D print uh, X files. And there you can see is um, like the first X, X project is just a little dancing, talking, singing robot. So the very, the very first X project, you've built an actor. You have a little actor and it can talk and sing and do a little dance in place. They don't actually drive around on the table because it uses regular servo motors. So it just can kind of like wheel around and dance. And there's video demo videos of the thing and there's videos how to assemble it. And it, and it shows you, it's just four experiments. You're only using four experiments to build this robot. So you can, the code is online again, and um, it shows you that you're combining power on the RoboGuts board, 3D LED lesson, the speak jet lesson, lesson, and the standard servo motor lesson. So the different, the different X projects take you up through different capabilities. This one, this one meanders around with an ultrasonic sensor, so it doesn't bump into things. Then there's one <clears throat> with a camera using um, one of the, uh, I forget which camera that is. Oh, that's, um, uh, I forget the name. Oh, Pixie Cam, that's the Pixie Cam. Um, yeah, I used a few different cameras, so I don't remember which one's which anymore. <laughs> And then there's, you know, there's other other things. And there's, you know, like here, animating a skull that can talk and sing and scare people. I have mine set up on top of the refrigerator by my apartment door. So when people walk in the door, it welcomes them and then tells them they look like a tasty morsel. <laughs> and um, so then, then, then the more sophisticated uh, build is, the X project gets into like building a billy bot because there's a lot more parts to that, a little more complicated, although still it's only four lessons to build, you know, to have it talk and sing and wiggle around on the desktop. Then there's OLED displays and there. And so I keep getting bigger and bigger with um, different X projects, even um, 3D, 3D printed, dual arm industrial type robot kit then um i did this one this this one i was showing off at a maker fair it got a lot of attention doesn't do anything it's just a machine that spins and wiggles and does stuff and uh, i really should design it a little bit better because after a few hundred hours it started wearing out because uh, the the different um vertical positions we're starting to lean back and forth, so I should have had a, another brace behind them, keep them straight. This one was a real fun one, and it's uh, it's one of the demo videos I put on there because as I'm learning learning how to tweak the software, it's telling me what it's doing, so I can know where in the software what to tweak on it so that it works correctly. And then um, there's of course there's a robot car, autonomous car, making music with floppy disk drives. Um, uh, this is a, a theremin, music theremin. And um, then there's a, using um, a pie pan from a store-bought pie Pan. We have a lot of potluck dinners and lunches and stuff here, and people are always bringing these store-bought pies down. So I grabbed a, a few of these pie pans and stuff and turned in salad bowls and turned it into like a flying saucer with blinking lights, and it makes noises and sings. Then I started developing, looking at the prices of a lot of the online robot platforms that are like $200 to over $1,000, I realized that it's a lot cheaper to just make your own. So using dowel rods and just 3D printing a few little brackets to connect the dowel rods together, you can make a robot platform almost any size you want. 
And again, all those part files are online for free to 3D print the parts. And you go to the hardware store, buy a, dial, buy a dowel rod for like three bucks and cut it to length and width, you know, for the platform you need. And I just use pieces of, I like to get the TV packing boxes. Everybody's buying TVs around here all the time. So I can get a box out of the dumpster cut it up to use for a nice sturdy platform, but you can use cheap plywood, whatever you want for the platform and just stick your um, components on top, run the wires down to the, you know, like I run them through a little hole in the platform down to the motors. And here I got a mechatronic wheel robot platform. Then of course I went to a little more complicated things and this is a laser cut um, hex pod with with gripper in the front and stuff. So there's all these different all these different types of um, X projects. This is one for playing music using a stipper motor, and I just glued it to the top of a milk carton. And actually, I made a stereo one, so it's got two milk cartons, and so it shifts back and forth between the two milk cartons to make notes. So it's a, so you got stereo music instead of just mono music playing. And um, actually, a lot of this a lot of this technology to control the stepper motors, servo motors, DC motors, and the um, speakjet chip, I've adapted with another little box I made, this little box I made which plugs into an RS-232 port. And then you got your audio out over here. And then there's, it takes um, five volts. Right. I, I think it's just five volts DC. And I don't remember if there's a, I have mine hooked up to my Altair 8800 computer so that it can talk and sing songs too. And um, oh, I should have had that queued up. I think I can. Let me, um, we couldn't see you, Walton, unless you stop your sharing. Say again. We didn't see the uh, the what you were showing because you're sharing your screen. Oh, okay, yeah. Let me um. Video should still be somewhere. Uh, yeah, a little it. square though. There it is. I don't have to see the. I'll see. If I have to go full screen on this. I get no. That doesn't help. Um, we, we see your video. I don't, I don't see the control to unshare the screen on the bottom and you know you should be able to see both. unshare is at the top it's at the top yeah should you be able to no I, oh, oh i'm in my web page that's why yeah let me um shrink that down uh you should have a bar at the top of your yeah, I got it. I like this. Oh, okay. I did, but no. I can only like put some up here. But if, if everybody's like a full screen, you can't see them. Or usually the user, the user can switch between, yeah. you know, um, can you, can you user uh, person and presentation. Can you see this? Uh, yeah, find this. That's it's like a yellow, yellow screen. Yeah, yeah. Yellow yeah. Screen break oh, okay. Put my computer. <laughs> Let me um clear the buffer. Hang on, I'm gonna reboot the computer. It should show up on the. Um, I think we see what you're showing. He's rebooting another computer that's connected oh. to the serial port, probably. <laughs> and it's maybe the bandwidth on here is hogging the whole thing. Let me see. Oh, no, I haven't got the, that's my problem. Let's see. We got to mount a couple of disks in here. Should have had this queued up. I didn't think about it.
Well, this is um. Okay, fourth disc. Get all these discs mounted. What OS do you run, Walt? Say again? What operating system are you running? Okay, on the Altair 8800, I'm running a CPM operating system. <laughs> I used to use that 20 years ago. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, there we go. You see the booth on the screen? Yeah. Yep, CPM 2.2. <laughs> no. So I go to the B drive. <laughs> million programs on the B drive. So I run M basic and then um Oh, I got to remember the name of the. Oh, yeah, I remember now. Oh, of course, if I. I'm always shifting stuff around. I think A is. Well, I guess I, I guess I don't have that thing hooked up. What the heck? Well, I got, can I got like a million switches and stuff around here for all this stuff. <laughs> Walt, can we buy your T-shirts on your website? Not on my website. Um, I, there might be a link on my website, but um, to get this T-shirt that I'm wearing, you would go to you would go to um, how do I turn the share off? Oh, oh wait, there it is. Stop share. Yeah, there we go. On 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 um, designashirt.com okay. has this this thing. And also um, an, another website, which I think the link is on my website too, r2pv1.com. But designashirt.com, to get to this design, you, you go in there, you log in with my email address, w-p-e-r-k-o at brainless.org. Log in with that, um, that, and then you can see the design. I don't know if you can find the design any other way on that site. I, I haven't really explored it a lot. But then the other site, they have coffee cups and all kinds of crap you can buy with um, some of the cartoons and, or, you know, this design and other designs and stuff on it. They're, they're, they're fun. Like this T-shirt, I, I always buy it in this color. And you know, I just have this one design on um design dot design shirt dot com. And because that's just like my favorite version of the t-shirt. <laughs> but um right now, you know, like the um, Robogut circuit board, these are these are all still just prototypes. Um this is that's my problem is I'm you know 73 years old. This stuff is all prototypes. I want other people to go out and teach and and s sell the boards. Then I can I have a new design which is actually a, a lot better a lot better than this design, but I haven't had any manufactured. And nowadays I can get them manufactured pretty cheap over in China. I was like these red boards I had manufactured in Texas. And just a just a bare board was twenty five dollars. 
I mean, it's just nuts, the prices, domestic prices for fabrication of a circuit board. But in China, I can get a hundred of, for 25 bucks, I can get like a hundred of these boards made. Well, um, thank you for sharing that, Walt, because that helps us to transition to the next part of this, which is about supply chain. Right. So, yeah. Well, well, see, that's the thing is, uh, you know, like I get the I get the boards manufactured in China cheaper, but also the for building up the kits for the um, for the RoboGut Steam Education Program, I can connect people with distributors to get the parts really cheap. So you can build up, um, I have like what I did was, you know, for the few students I get um, before COVID hit, I was getting like a student a month, mostly autistic homeschooled kids between about seven and 10. And so I, I would go to the Dollar Tree store, buy these toolboxes for a buck, then some some things I had to make myself. I don't know if you can see the little patch on there. So I could add that little adapter to plug in a battery pack to the RoboGuts board. I got a I got a distributor in China to buy these these little motors for just a, 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 a you know in small quantities, they're like a bucket, two bucks or something. Larger quantities, you can get them for under a dollar. Same thing is like for the jumper wires and um, the cable for the pickaxe, pickaxe programming. And then another distributor connection I have is for making these making these kits. The, this kit here, it's just. 25 bucks, it's packed with a, I get this plastic box packed with a whole bunch of components. It's not, it doesn't hold all the lessons, but it does have most of the more important lessons. And then I stuff it with a RoboGut circuit board and pickaxe chip and some, some custom wiring that I made. Well, I guess you can see some of the custom wiring there, like for the speaker. I, I, I get the speaker from them guys, but then I add the wire with the thing, with the connector on it. But if you're teaching a class, like at a boys and girls club, you bring a couple soldering irons along and have the kids or students, whoever you get, make their own wiring for these things. You start out making the power cord wire, either with this thing or a nine volt adapter cable and just adding adding the little tail end that plugs into it you know this so they're learning about crimping they're learning about you know some basic soldering and then they and then like i say the 25 bucks this is a great deal for this kit that i after i stuff it i sell it for 150 dollars so there's a great markup on those things and but i want other people to buy the kits and build them up and sell them for the profit. And they just buy the RoboGuts board for me for a dollar, my dollar profit. What I what I have done with these kits is also some of my prototypes. I've made so many of these prototypes with all the different faces that I, I put these in the box too. So they can start out with one, one pre-built body and wheels and after that, they can print their own. But anyway, yeah, I guess, Patricia, you can go on with um, more of the um, with, uh, supply chain stuff. Yes, yes, because this is the vision I had when I proposed this project or this a series, is that makers usually make one thing. And your website and the series of projects that you have is great because it demonstrates that you have done all of these things and you keep going. You demonstrate a, a next step level, which is you are trying to take your product out into the world and develop, develop your product. 
you're taking a slightly different approach than say a company like Sparkfun or Adafruit, which would develop the kits and market them. Uh, but because you just want to market the board. But I want to ask a question about the board itself, Walt. So when you do these projects, are the connections soldered or are they uh, plug-in? Oh, it's all plug-in. Um, let's see. See, like, here's a, here's a battery pack. Mm -hmm. The board, the battery goes on this little two pin. Let me, let me go back to share screen. So it's, um, we can see it there. We see it. Oh, okay. Let me close that then. So on, on the RoboGuts board, on this side is where power goes in. This side is where the switch is. Power switch goes on. So I have, I set up a standard on the board so that the plus, plus goes towards the inner part, the inner part of the board and ground is on the outside. And that's the same with the breadboard things. These three conductors here is signal plus five volts or three volts, depending on what you're using and ground standard RC hobby connection. This little breadboard here is completely separate than from that coming out of the chip. And that this allows you to stick little pieces on there and then jumper from the chip over here for like LEDs and stuff. And then okay. and the same thing with the power switch is ground on the outs are well actually there's no ground here. It's just a switch to connect these two pins together. So you could use a jumper plug or a power switch, which I don't have any switches here. Okay. Um, the next question I have for you, thank you, Walt, for sharing that. One of the big issues that I personally, as an educator, have had is, you know, I personally just want to bypass the whole soldering thing. I want to get to the projects. And the reason I want to do that is multifold. One is I'm not a very good solderer. And the other is, I don't know that I can always trust the kids with the soldering irons and there's one of me, right? So um, plug-in is very good. I've actually been working to um, identify some platforms where I can uh, not have to solder. And I found one, which is the micro bit uh, has, uh, there's a bird brain does a micro bit kit and we do that um, right but but micro bits my, micro bits costs a lot more this this program here is the cheapest there is it's five to do the whole program you're still spending five times less money than like the yes. Legos mindstorm kit right so i'm just i'm just sharing with you some of the challenges that i've had and walt i uh, thank you for sharing your demo today yeah. I am interested in exploring your path with some support from you uh, in going through your lessons so that I can see what difficulty there might be in uh, putting things together so that in the event I can gather some students that I know what I'm doing. So um, I do want to thank you for sharing this. How long, back to the supply chain question, if I decided that I wanted to have just 10 of your boards or or whatever you considered your kit to be, um, you can identify the uh, the manufacturer, the distributor, and I can order them, or you can uh, provide them to me. Okay, How long so would that, well, what's the- Basically, I want other people to go to the distributors and buy all the parts, and put the kits together to you know sell to their students because okay. basically if i try to do if i have a thousand people wanting kits <laughs> i can't do that <laughs> i just can't do that I, right, I, right. I, yeah but sure. i but can handle selling roboguts boards at least sure. i think i can and so I will work with you yeah, on that one. Right. Yeah. The the idea with um the 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 few little 
the few little things that need to be soldered. It is possible to get somebody like over in China or India or Vietnam. There's lots of places to get little mom and pop companies that will be glad to make all those little cables. Like um, I've done it with the LEDs. I, I make a make a little cable like this, and you can plug in a three color LED on this thing, and then it just plugs into the um, plugs into the RoboGuts board, so they can do the LED experiments. And well, I think that's a learning opportunity also in trying to figure out how to solve the problem of getting getting things done at some factory, whether it's in the United States or overseas. So right. I'm yeah. willing to work through that with you too. Yeah, uh, another part of the education is learning how to, you can buy the parts to crimp these things together. So mm -hmm. you crimp the wires, cut the wire to length, crimp it on. Mm -hmm. And that's something little kids probably can do that better than I can because my fingers are really big and to hold the little tiny parts is tough. <laughs> Okay, again, again, to reiterate, Walt, I, I, I'm actually quite excited by this project, and I'd like to work with you more on it. How far we get really would depend on um, how much collaboration we actually are able to have, you know, your time is, and my time, and, um, and, you know, always, always our mutual interest in continuing. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate this. I really appreciate yeah. your coming, sharing your project, everything you're doing. Yeah, I, I should say the the first Maker Fair I went to where I was showing off the stuff, not even thinking of selling it because I had been putting all the lessons online and telling people where it's, you know, on the line that you can find the links to where to buy a lot of parts or how to find, search for them on eBay and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, this mom came along with her little five-year-old kid. He looked at the micro bits, the, the um, um, I forget that magnetic one that snaps together circuits and stuff. The, the, the Maker Fair was at a Barnes and Noble store and they had like 10 different beginner kits for kids in that there. And um, the kid had already done all, all those other kits. And he was so he wanted something more challenging. Five years old, he needed <laughs> something more challenging. So he came over and he's looking at the looking at the Billy Bot. You know, it was telling jokes and singing songs over and over and over and saying, "Welcome to the Barnes and Noble Maker Fair." And um, he wanted to know more about it. I I spent an, about an hour and a half talking to this five year old explaining how to use a RoboGut circuit board. And this is an earlier prototype board than this one I was using at the time. And his mom came over and she she's looking at him. She's going like, you like this? And he's going like, yeah, this is really great because I can build all kinds of things with it. He's five years old and his mind was just going a mile a minute. The little bits and the micro bit, little bits was the magnetic one and the micro bit thing and uh, they had some stamp stuff there, and I don't even remember all the different stuff they had, my, my, the um, Mindstorm kits. But anyway, he wanted he wanted this thing, and his mom's going like, how much to buy a kit in that? And I told her, I says, I don't have kits, and all I have are these prototype boards that cost me, I think it was like 150 or $175 a board, something like that. That I had paid for the um, for the prototype RoboGuts board just so I could build a couple of Billy bots for demo. Mm -hmm. and then she kept insisting she wanted to buy a prototype board in that. Now, I only had the one with me at the show, mm -hmm. and I I told her I says I can't sell you this thing. I need these things for testing in that. Finally, finally, and I also told her that. Barnes and Noble made it clear I couldn't sell her any sell anything at the Maker Fair in their store. But then the manager came over and he said, if you want to sell her one board, that'll be okay. But don't, you know, don't bring in more product in here to sell. So she gave me a check for 200 bucks for the board, 
bought a 3D printer at the Barnes and Noble, mm. and and then they were really happy because they sold the 3D. I was sitting right in front of a 3D printer on the table, showing this off and talking about the fact that it's all 3D printed. That's where they put me separate from all those other kits and that. And so they sold us the 3D printer. I sold a RoboGuts board for 200 bucks. And a week later, that five-year-old had built his first robot. And his mom sent me a picture of his, the first robot he built and wanted to order more RoboGuts circuit boards. So that's, that's when I went to Texas and got a bunch of these made. Sold, ended up selling him five more RoboGuts circuit boards so he could do more experiments and build more robots. Wow. And at that point, then he switched over to Arduino, which mm -hmm. is the purpose of my education program. Yeah. Get them started, teach them, teach them structured language programming. And when they get comfortable with the robotics and the sensors and motors and the programming, then they can move on to C language and Arduino and other more complicated systems. And the, so they went and bought all the other parts and stuff online off eBay for all the robots that he built. She, she, you know, the email, the one email I got from her, she said, this is great with all the links to all the, they got a whole page full of links that they saved just for building robot stuff for a little five-year-old. I oldest, love that you find it. Um, I, I should say my oldest student was 85. It took her three days, two hours a day but after that, she was on her own building robot toys for her grandchildren. Sounds like fun. Well, I'm done with my questions. Thank you so much, Walt. This has been uh -huh. an amazing connection. And does anyone else have questions for Walt? I just wanted to, to mention that, Walt, you've been here before. We've had your, you gave us a, I think it was a show and tell a couple of years yeah. ago or something. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember. welcome back. I, I, remember. Remember. <laughs> I, remember many times. I remember your kids and your uh, your cartoons. Yeah, the cartoons. Um, Servo magazine said they could print the cartoons if there was demand for it. They, they, you know, I gave them like fifty cartoons in super high resolution, and they said, you know, that yeah, it'd be easy to shrink them down and publish them, but. They didn't think there's any demand for cartoons in their magazine. And the cost of putting a cartoon in a magazine takes space that might be for advertising. <laughs> so so they're, they're kind of like, again for you. Yeah, well, I think I think a hundred people need to bug them about that, uh, you know, get the cartoons going. Because I've got over 700 cartoons. So it's it's almost an endless supply for them. I think it would be great to see it. Yeah. How are you doing, Walt? Yeah, this is, you know, and again, at the top of that first page, r2pv1.com, there's a link for that NASA Tech Briefs contest. I need lots of votes, lots of views on there. And I need people to spread the word because. When does the contest end, Walt? Oh, um, I think in September. I, okay. The, um, you can't enter it anymore, I don't think. But the voting goes on till about September, I think. And then, then they... Well, I'd love to work with you on some of your projects. And then um, we can promote that on my videos. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the easiest thing is like we can do Skype or Zoom meetings if we need to. But, uh, and I and I do that with some people, they get stuck. And so we do a little Skype and I show them what they're doing wrong or how to do something that they couldn't figure out from the website. You know, cause some, some of the kids get stuck, you know, here and there, but most of the time email works great. They, they ask me a question, I give them an answer and they're on their way. Yeah, let's talk offline about that. Uh -huh. All right. Um, there's still five minutes left in this hour. I don't know. You, you guys want to watch a video or? <laughs> it's okay. We can take a, a question. Any, any questions? If not, uh, we can break for lunch. 
I think that works for me. Thank you. Thank you everyone for facilitating. I really appreciate this. Right. Thank Thanks you for all. letting me do the demo. Your, like your kids. Okay, so let me pause the recording. Hello. So, the, the, this, so this thing here, that's called RViz, which is a, a visual display of the room. And before the meeting uh, started up today, I, I drove my robot around manually using my ever handy um, a Logitech controller, which is actually, as we found out, also useful for driving submarine um, submersibles. <laughs> Hopefully mine will work out better than that one did. Um, so this is Arviz uh, that shows my basement. You can sort of, this is it here. And um, it, the purpose of Arviz is to display various, um, various um, data visually that's useful for navigating around. So like if I just turn off this, uh, whoops. Right, so that turns off, that turns off the map, the planner. Uh, the whole point of navigation is that the, the software plans where the robot is going to go so it doesn't, uh, doesn't bump into things. The robot is here over in the corner. Um, and I'm just going to run it around the basement. This 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 display is is the image from the webcam that sits on the front of it. So um, if you want it to go somewhere, you give it a goal, and with some luck, it will figure out where it is and then take off. Notice that it drives it it, it draws a a um, it's called a cost map. It it determines um, the optimum place for it to be without without bumping into things between the point where it was and the point the place where it's uh, where it's going to. So there it is. That's navigating. And one of the neat things about about this uh, about the ROS two navigation is that it's it's active. And as you can see, the room currently doesn't have any object uh, obstacles in the way. Let me just put one there. So this is in the category of being mean to robots. <laughs> uh, so let's um, mm -hmm. let's set a goal over on the other side of the room. Now what's it doing there? I guess it had, the, the system drew an avoiding a box around my box to avoid, and the robot is trying to figure out the best way to go around it. And as you can see, there's a it drew a line around, and um, once it it'll it'll eventually decide that it um, it's a uh, <laughs> it's it's not doing so well, is it? There it goes. There it goes. Yeah, it avoided the box uh, quite significantly. But are, you, you, are you having mapping on this, uh, or is this the just the obstacle avoidance portion? Because you're everything's running. Everything's running. The you're navigation not. is running, and the obstacle right. avoidance is running. Right, but your map. Uh, you already made the map, though. I mean, the map ahead of time, or is it? Map? Oh yes, I'm sorry. Yes, I made the map. I made the map um, yeah, uh, earlier, which is what came up, uh, which was what, which is what would come up when when I fire up the machine. Correct. Right, but the um, it's no, it's not mapping. It's not mapping now. So if you put down a box, it has to use the lidar to sort of. It has to, in obstacle avoidance mode purely, right? Oh, oh, yes, of course, sure. And actually, it's sort of interesting. If I take the box out, yeah, I have this situation with orange as well. If you, if you move stuff around, it may, uh, it nothing looks, changed unless at the, uh, un, until I actually put put it in motion. It takes a little bit of uh, lidaring to to clear out the space where the box was, right? 
Right, right. Occupancy is the occupancy, occupancy map or something. So yes. you may see a robot go around a non-existent box sometimes because it didn't fill that data in yet. Okay. So there's again, that's that is Ross 2 Humble. Uh, it's called Navigation 2, which is the current uh, technology for for navigating robots autonomously. Um, showing in a in an Arvis, and I think it just froze. <laughs> so I guess it's a good time to good time to finish up. So any other questions? How about your um uh I know the on the you know the meeting, the Ross meetings, it's been a long topic of the the uh, capabilities of the camera refresh and filling the network bandwidth and having all sorts of, um, you know, sort of hangups there. It's, it, it, what if, what's your, the, what's the latest on that? I see yours is refreshing. Um, you know, it's like one frame every, it seemed like every second here or something, but. It, it's 20 frames per second. Um, but we're only seeing, we're only seeing updates every like second or so. Or... Uh, yeah, that's a, it's, there is definitely some delays that take place. I haven't really quantified it, but. Of course, you could also maybe when if you shared your shared with video on your, when you share your screen, click the video optimize button that might help it if, it, if it's the, if it's just the zoom that's causing it. Oh, it could. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm. Yes, I I believe so because I don't see too, I don't see too much I don't see any hesitation. Yeah, you might mine. correct. Want to impress uh, or easily amuse us, then you could. Uh, yeah, next time you share, just click that video optimize button. Let's see. Um, checkbox. Checkbox. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I push it. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna push this one at the bottom of the uh, uh, where you select your screen. Um, actually, I, 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 for some reason, the, the optimize for video doesn't uh, doesn't open. No, no, it, you, you click share screen and then there's a little. Check. Yeah, I did that. It's odd. There you go. Yeah, right. that's, I wonder if that would improve the. So you, so anyway, my, the answer to my question is your. You can see that bottom right image is awesome. I mean, it updates more frequently. The bottom right is his. Uh, yeah, just but a, one one is a webcam from a robot. Oh, I see. You, now you you you've got one from directly from the PC and one from the robot. So yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the 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 one that shows the 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 floor <laughs> um, that shows the robot. That's an iPhone. That's got nothing to do with Ross. So of course it's live and and it's. It's fast. Our face baseline, though, yeah, but it's not the it's not the video. Right. Yeah, but but there's only... definitely um there's definitely a lag in with the with the Ross image data transfer. Yes, that's correct. But it is working. I mean, yeah. So I just wondered if you had any if there's any updates to how well that's working and and uh, if you can get fast faster video any if there's any way to get faster video on it. True. Well, that's it. That sounds like a good project. Because <laughs> there's definitely some some lag uh, here. Okay. Any any other questions then for that? Again, this is this is out of this really good book oh, that's okay. by our our good friend Camp, and uh, there's still uh, you know for those that want to follow through on it, there's you can still get um, not the very earliest uh, bot vax. I was very lucky to get the one I did. But you can get, um, you know, ones that have been produced in the last five years or so. And I guess some some folks are, might be aware is that the Botvac company is actually out of business. Um, the German company that bought them decided to go on to other things. Call from one eight four. They're out of business. Sorry, guys. Yeah, you gotta don't join the guy now. Like the, oh, NATO is out of business or what? Uh, what did you say, Ross? He's been he muted, Ross. A, a couple of years, I guess, a, a, a couple of years ago, a company, a German household appliance company bought NATO from the California entity, the California entity, and they shut it down just oh. recently. 
Oh, yes. Oh. But yeah, those, I have one too, which I need mean to get back to. And I, I have demo code here, but it has that wonderful feature where it's a cheap thing uh, refurbished and you can plug in a USB connector to, to your computer and you have a, a, a serial, you have a, a law, a, a, basically a text in an API directly to the, to the motors, I mean, a full command list. So right. unfortunately it's not binary as far as efficiency, but I mean, you, you know, that's ultimately Ross takes care of that, the driver, that's sending text commands, but then you can read them if there's you needed to debug. You could read the, the commands. What, what, what you actually can, yeah. So, right. So again, for for those that are familiar, the the, the bot vac the bot vac includes you know the wheel driver the wheel um, drives the wheels odometry and probably most importantly the lidar and yeah. all of that's in a package that's pretty efficient. That's right. Um, Oh, sorry. It's like, yeah, go to you go to eBay.com and you look for uh, neat, neat. Just look for needle. And then it's like the, usually that D80 or something, I think. A D, yeah, D80 is the, the D series is the is um, is compatible with the, the API. Or uh, yeah, uh, it, you don't have to put D80. It can be, um, but it can't be the real new ones, right? Um, correct. Why am I in the wrong country? Gee, that's really it's, weird. It says here, um, I'm just reading out of Champ, out of Camp's book. Um, it, the latest models, D8, 9, and 10, do not use the original API, which the software is written for. But the, the smaller numbers, D3, 4, 6, and 7, as well as the, the, the original models called uh, D80, um, D85, and the XV. This happens to be an XV. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's certain, um, yeah, there's certain brands. Uh, and uh, I, I could mention that I, I did a, as a result of a, of a presentation like this that I did uh, to a, to a, a, a forum closer to where I live. Um, I put together a short PowerPoint presentation describing sort of the elements of of how the of how the, the of how the uh, the bot vac uses navigation. Anyway, I've posted that to my my own public uh, GitHub, which I, I could post if you like. Yeah, there's a there's a D eighty I think on the, in that picture. What are you? What 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 world? What what country are you in? To U.S. Okay. And they're expensive. If that's You're in Czechoslovakia. <laughs> you see, you see, like right after dot com, it has C S C H. Comes up to U.S. Oh. How did? How did? I've never had. This is like a demo nightmare. Like a like. How, did, <laughs> how do you get? Happened to me before. How do you get suddenly? Please everything up to the dot com. No, this I this is what I typed there in you initially. What does anybody know United States in Czech language? Or, yeah. Yeah, sure. There it is. Isn't that a US? Is that well, I had to change to English first because it was actually in Czech. Maybe at a Czech. You couldn't go to eBay.com because it was fixed. For a different for the check. Why is that? I don't know how. I you know this happens to me at my office because uh, at work um, it thinks I'm in Mountain View because <laughs> of my work thing. But I'm not. But I'm logged in through the university's web, uh, university's uh, Wi-Fi. That's the only way I could think of why this is happening. Because the last person um, was Jack. I don't know. Check check the hacker. Maybe it's a hacker. No, see, it's still going. Oh, you're back. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get out of that? That's I have no idea. Oh, I think it's time to yeah delete cookies. Basically. Yeah, delete yeah, actually, cookies. in this case, the best way to get out of them is you have to clear your cache or something. Microsoft is um, because of Yahoo. Yahoo. Who uses Yahoo in this thing? <laughs> no, I don't use Yahoo either. I, I think that's I don't know how that's happened. Maybe I've been hacked. Oh well. Um, I guess there was one other thing I, I wanted to mention is that I've been I was successful. 
I was currently running a Raspberry Pi 4, which, which I would, but it, um, I guess about six months ago, I tinkered with, with the system to, to, and I loaded, I successfully loaded the BotVac code into a Raspberry Pi 3. So it doesn't, it, the, the, the system doesn't need, you know, the hip, the, the computing power of a four, the three is fine. And three. actually, I, not all that long ago, I bought, I bought a Raspberry Pi, what's this called? Um, zero two and um my project coming up is to see if i to see if this works uh camp thinks it might but we'll see and if so that's great because these things are twenty dollars and and available so it's as the three yeah, is you it up and you get it you find um, anyway yeah i, I want to it's a good way to learn ross mm -hmm. uh, this is a very low low cost intro, uh, hardware uh -huh. and uh there are people supporting the full ross stack for it essentially. and the damn thing just just works frankly i've just yeah. in the last couple of weeks i've i've had to i've had to rebuild uh, actually i had to build rebuild my desktop um ubuntu 22 and it just comes together you load in you know megabytes of code gigabytes of oh, hundreds of megabytes of navigation code and um, you start up the, the particular packages that are specifically for navigation. Well, that's yeah, it just works. And but, but the neato part is only a few megabytes of, of GitHub. You know, Correct. Now. It's it's uh, yeah. There's not uh, not much. Not yeah, much. The ROS itself has you know you know lots of lots of stuff. And so you're running. Um, what do you recommend? Uh, can I still run twenty oh four or is it? Oh no. This no, is, it's dead. It's, it's uh, well, 2004 is, um, I mean, it's the ROS associated with 2004, which is Galactic, I think, Galactic, which is now end of life. Yes, and this is why. So 2204 and Humboldt? Or, correct. Correct. That's the, and your, your things are pretty stable with the, the NAV2 and using the bot back and all, sure. the, all the bot back. GitHub stuff, the, the driver. It just works. And and all the drivers are there's you know, there's twelve hundred packages or something on the well, that's on, yeah, talking about Ross, the big on Ross. Ross to, I guess, um, on the but Ross. Yeah, the Neo botback support, it goes from the bottom up having like a, a driver that sends text messages, you know, essentially sends text messages through that serial port to the robot. Then above that is layers that tie in ROS so ROS can send commands directly to this through that serial interface to the robot from your yeah, I could sort of show that to you here. This is this is my That's desktop. The thing this is this is the terminal. This is the the terminal window that started the bot back. And if you just scroll back here a bit. And maybe you zoom in on that or maybe so you, so this was what runs I'm currently logged into the Raspberry Pi on the on the bot back that's what this sort of sort of says raspberry pi 4 this is this is the machine name of the raspberry and, and you type this uh, launch file and um well a whole lot of stuff happens and down towards the end the the all important piece is right here and you where it, uh, yeah that's where it the opens serial. a serial port and then squirts 128 kilobits per second to, uh, data to run the motors and and read the uh, lidar and yeah, there's you know you can go to a web page still today and see the uh, Neato bot back engineering serial commands you know, all in all the text. So if you get that robot, you don't have to use ROS. You could write your own. You could actually write you own, can yeah. You know script and just send it serial. Anybody you know any, any way you care to do it. Um, it's just all command Neato yeah API. But this whole this whole system on uh, this whole like ROS stack of for or driver for Neato for ROS is built on top of what the Neato R you know provides as this the bare bones like access to its command send it commands like spring right. lidar drive forward you know backward whatever. Well, Ross, do you need an Arduino for that or do you go in direct? No, no the the um the the debug port on the, the needle runs 128 kilobits per second ascii and it's directly connected to the U, a usb port on the raspberry 
Yeah, you need a Raspberry Pi to, uh, you need something with a full serial USB interface, which is normally a, like a Raspberry Pi. Don't play with USB, you can send it any serial. Well, it's a USB plug. I mean, you have to, it's, yeah. it's a USB, well, you need USB chip a connector. <clears throat> connector oh, and wire, you know, <laughs> wire to an Arduino. Just you could, I guess you could technically do this. I think that's how um, yeah. Alan yeah. did it for his gray robot. Yeah. He used Ross but went through an Arduino. Oh, that's something else. So that's the, um, that's sort of the Ross Arduino support, right? But in this case, it's, um, we're talking about exactly we're talking about a serial interface to control the bot back, and then how you access and that. Running Ross on the bot. Yeah, you can, now you can access that serial through whatever. As long as you have that uh, USB plug, I mean, or like a wire, and you know how to hook that, get the serial lines for that. You don't have to use USB, but most of us don't do that. We just plug into some uh, computer that can handle USB like a raspberry pi right even okay. a low quality like a or early right. raspberry pi can do you know basic functionality what's this one oh. in fact there's there's an i guess i should this is the place to mention that there's another really good stack if you don't want to go the the bot vac mac the mock fat route there's a, a robot called lena robot um which uh, that's, that's the name of the GitHub where, where, a, where, where a developer has posted a whole lot of code and it uses an Arduino to an Arduino or a Teensy or an ESP32 to, to, to actually drive, uh, to do the real-time co no computing that's necessary to drive the road, the, the wheels, uh, read the odometry from the wheels and to run the LiDAR. So yeah, an Ar they're... The, the, that architecture is is a, is a, is a good way to to put something together, and the, and there's there is code available to do that. You were just showing them that that was your Lino bot, the one you're just showing there. Let's see. This is this is this was the guts of the bot vac. <laughs> well, that's the bot vac. That's the bot vac. That's right. Um, Camp actually finishes up his book. I get nothing for doing this. Um, oh, <laughs> um, he uh, his, the, the the last chapter of his book actually talks about the, uh, the a very summary, a quick summary of a quick summary of the Lena oh, robot, no, no, no. and he's actually putting one together um, along with another another developer that um, where we get together on Sunday afternoons. Oh, you get together on Sunday? Pardon me? Not the Tuesday? You're talking about a Sunday? Oh, that's a separate and different meeting. Or the, yeah, there's... Because there's a Sunday morning one with Ch Chaz, right? Or it used to be. Correct. Yeah, that's that's his group. That's his, te his Texas group. Correct. Yeah, that's not the one you're... Is that the one you're talking... Oh, oh, because it is in afternoon for you. Right, right. I'm sorry. 11, Eastern time zone. So, so, yes, that's, yeah, that's, that's the, the one. Same one. Right. Yeah, so yeah, Lino, Lino, bot, uh, Lino Robot is a open source um, effort going on. Um, there's a way, it's on GitHub, Lino Bot, uh, GitHub Lino Bot. And, and it, it, it's, it, has, oh, it okay. has the capability of, of incorporating um, 3D cameras um, and using them for, so it's pretty hey, uh, for, for navigation. You know, wow. for, for doing for doing um, odometry and and the navigation as well. Hey Ross, it looks like you have a lot of material. Uh, would you be interested to do a, a one hour presentation that we can sign you up for? <laughs> oh, it, it wouldn't take an it wouldn't take an hour, but sure. I mean, yeah. you did. This already <laughs> took, this already took like this took a, uh, a nice chunk. If, I mean, if you're interested, Sorry. we could we could schedule for you. We can schedule you for uh, an hour. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, um, I actually did. I did something uh, about about two weeks ago, um, which took about half an hour. It was a, a short PowerPoint presentation with the usual, you know, slides with text that, that describe how it works, <clears throat> uh, followed by a demo. So yeah, you could put. I'd be pleased to. 
to right, help you, folks understand how we supposed to go for next month? Uh, let's see, next month is, is August. Um, let's see, uh, it, your meeting would be the 12th, right? Uh, yeah, the, the second Saturday. Um, yeah, the 12th, 12th, and then September 9th. I, I, it's up to you. I'm a, I, my wife hasn't got me down doing anything or going anywhere. <laughs> on the 12th of the night or September 9th so either way would be fine yeah let's get to you for an hour uh next month sure and I'll I'll tell I'll tell camp about it who uh yeah maybe also had had his inevitable style of making it make it making it fun all right you're set hey Ben thank you no, let's Thank you, Ron. All right. Yeah, there's always little bits and pieces you need to find out after that demo of the. I've seen, I don't know if we've all seen this demo like a hundred times of click and point and, you know, uh, and then the robot does it. You've got to dig a little to find out um, if there's anything in it for you, you know, to what, you know, how do you get going in Ross and what's the state of things? You know, you've yeah. got to have. 2204 if you want you gotta have a bunch to install you gotta have you know if you want the latest ross too and, and, like and it's all available okay that's okay. I'll, you can, well um, what i will do is I will, I will present a short powerpoint presentation it won't be as boring as some business ones which hopefully will be interesting i'm going to post it on my my own my own github rep repository the file for that which right. actually describes the elements of what you need to to buy to to build a needle turtle. So I'll I'll post um, the uh, the URL of my my own site. Oh, good. All right. All right. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Ross. It's a pleasure. It's always always great right. to, so, to uh, share to share after I've learned so many things from from all you folks as well. All right. So we have uh, Thomas. It's up next with uh, his drummer. What? Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You want me to turn on the microphone over here? No, no. Yeah, okay, don't you, you don't do that because it has to go through. It's always to us. Feedback. Okay, I won't do that thing. Um, to make the long story short, uh, we were at the Riverside Robotics uh, meeting a few months ago, and three of us formed the band, and we didn't have a drummer. So I said, "What the heck? You know, I can build robots." Why not build a robot drummer? And one of the guys uh, said to me, he says, but you can just buy a little box and it can play as a robot drummer. I said, no, that's not good enough. I wanted a robot drummer that would hit with real drumsticks. So if I wanted to move it all to an acoustic set somewhere down the line, I could do that. Hmm. And so this is version one here. It consists of, and let me put my, my laptop. Can you see that? Is it is it coming on the screen? Can you highlight me? Uh, on your camera. Can yeah. you highlight me? Yeah. Yes. I think you got to hit the three dots. Very well, then we could. Okay. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah. There we go. So there it is. Uh, this is actually a drum machine. It can play various beats all by itself. But I added four servo motors attached to uh, drumsticks. And there's an Arduino on the floor that's running this whole thing. <laughs> and right now it's got a single beat. And I'll turn it on and demo it. <clears throat> okay, here we go. We're gonna give it some power and hopefully it'll work. It's been working all morning, driving everyone crazy, so. <laughs> And we'll call that <laughs> That's better. I saw when it had one stick, I think. Yeah. When you were at the at the uh HBRC meeting. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's four. 
And it's how, getting how faster. Fast can it be per minute? Can you actually get these to work? I have no idea. I haven't tried yet. <laughs> so, I mean, circle's not that fast, but this is this is uh Lower the version 1.0. We'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, you're right. I guess what it, what controller? It's an Arduino. Oh, is it possible to lower noise from uh, several servers? You can you get can quiet, still, you can buy quiet servos, sure. And and pass the ship code of the Arduino? Uh, sure, I can show that. Yeah, you got to do a full That's robot band good. or yeah, just a drummer? <laughs> drummer and maybe a bass player. We'll see. Uh, at least the drummer. Bringing that one kid that was here about five years ago that made the little, uh, he had a guitar that was playing all the notes. I don't know if you guys Yeah. That. <laughs> oh. Okay, so here's the code. Uh, actually, this is the actual code. Here, it's yeah, it's pretty simple, very straightforward. You you, uh, you uh, initialize, attach your uh, your servo uh, code, and then you play your drums. You put, you uh, bring the stick down. You adjust the servo uh, to a different place. Then you wait a little bit, and you bring it back up, and you wait a little bit, and you go to the next one, and it works pretty well. Uh, I do have to leave in a really short time, so I'm going to move to my second, <laughs> my second show and tell. Sure. Um, about a year and a half ago, I met a young man who was helping me, who agreed to help me design some hands for my fembots. Mm -hmm. The problem with robot hands online, all the the ones people have made in the past, is they're large. They're at least you know an ad adult male or larger. And I wanted one to be more feminine for the, the lady robots. Thomas, so, yeah. Uh, you're sharing your screen. You can't see the. Oh, <laughs> sorry. There oh, we yeah. go. So, this is the hand that I worked with a gentleman, uh, Eric Ohm, and he was uh, just finishing up college and needed a project and a company to work for so he can go into a real company. So we worked together on this. He did 99% of the engineering. I did a lot of feedback on it. And the idea was to use at most two servo motors, one for the thumb and one for the fingers to close the hand because I wanted it to be able to grip a bottle or a cup. And that's it because most of the hands out there are not designed to grip any. Um, this is probably too heavy for this thing because the, the servo motors are not really um, too beefy. But you can see, if, can you give me a bit? Can you turn that clockwise? And and thus it encircles. That's right. Close it all the way up. And thus it encircles it. And with the thumb closed, it should be able to grasp this with, uh, empty. Not with this much water because those servo motors are not very strong. Anyway, this is a, a success. It needs to be tuned in a little bit better, but otherwise it works fairly well. Pretty fast. And, and, and the idea was to mimic a woman's hand. And this is actually modeled after my wife. I took measurements from her hand and fingers and modeled this after her. <laughs> anyway. What's pulling the fingers in like cables? Uh, no, there's, it's a push rod system. Oh. It's a, uh, linkages here. One pushes the other, pushes the other, and, and they bring them in and out. I went with this as opposed to the string method that mm. the, um, Common. that everybody uses for the in movement cable. such thing, the cables, because cables, String. uh, are always needing to be adjusted. They, they tend mm. to stretch. They stretch. Mm. And that's the downside of cables. Um, so this is it. The, uh, assuming I can replicate these, I may start selling them. I don't know what kind of market there is, but I, I have a I have a plan here to put the whole thing up for sale. Any questions? No. Nope. All right. Nope. Well, thank you then. All right. Then. All right, uh, Steve, you're up. If you want to demo your uh, Dropbox. Oh, well, yeah. they're plugged in. It's so, mostly a 
interactivity. So anybody people, can okay, the spotlight if you spotlight, yeah, uh, I'm on like me. Yeah, they do that. Piano. That's pretty cool. They get, yeah. they get heavy though. Yeah, they can read them. Basically, left wheel and right wheel, over and back. Very simple. Oh, it's uh, RF. That's a long time with that battery. Yeah, I need to buy all new batteries, but it'll last maybe an hour, two hours, maybe more. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> these batteries are heavy, so they also act as a weight for the pen. You know? Uh huh. Oh, very good. Yeah. <laughs> It had the same look as that the board that the Bluetooth board. I saw it. Well, I'll carry out. Oh, this goes in upside down. Yeah, the pens just fall out. But I don't know. It's just I. I mean, since they're shock absorber, I didn't know really how to hold it. Oh, a small piece of felt will do it. Yeah. You can pass one of them around. I think it's a pretty nice build. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Arduino Nano and then uh, the motor drivers L290 to split at L90. And then, but you didn't have an RX module. Yeah, I know that you weren't here for the thing, but there's a man on the head. Oh, yeah. I find no, I I had it the fire. I had it the fire here. This thing you have to travel and you have to put it together. It's it's like part of this part of the effort here has to be a um, robust uh, kind of durable. Uh, durable electronics and wires and stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. I I have all your stuff. stuff. All your stuff. I work on a traveling museum show, so. Oh. I'm okay. kind of used to it. <laughs> that's a different thing. It has, it has to. Uh, yeah, that's my like other. Oh, my day job, I guess you would say. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I only do it a few times a year, but yeah, I'm used to transporting and traveling stuff. <laughs> Oh yeah, it has to. Uh, it has to park. Somehow I managed to get it all in my uh, in my pickup truck. Is the body wood and or in metal? I see metal and wood. And... Yeah, this is just. Uh, it might be MDF or an eighth inch plywood. Was I cut with your laser? with my laser? Yeah. Yeah, I designed the whole PC. chassis and the numbers and yes, it's very and everything. I yeah, I think I'm I'm more of a better builder than a coder, but you know, yeah, get I'm there. So I'm a coder. <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting there with the coding, <laughs> and you know that's why I'm here so I can learn more. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you want to see it? I just wanted to. Well, this one's working. That one's not. So I was going to switch it. So try. Let me up here. Spotlight. What's that? So if anyone wants to try these, just come. This one's working. Oh, Bill's. Or working this one, I don't know. It's always a broken wire, you know. You guys know that. 
not just the demo of God. <laughs> I W A H. Worked at home. Yeah. But I like the responsiveness of the part then that was cool. Yeah. 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 That whole way. No delay. Nice. How that? Motor We know. Well, it's for batteries. Yeah. Well, you know, there there's some varying opinions on that. Like. Like this one only has the antenna, like, so it's probably not that far, like, never feet. But they once and you have a yeah, yeah, I used to have to use a chance for your own next list that you the rule RF or was three volts on that. Uh, okay. So I either had to use a buck yeah. or take the three volts off the yeah. five inch yeah. 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 So by getting that one that the Arduino has on the line, one of them, yes, I made a bunk of three volts. They didn't really know that yeah. once had to go, we would have let them go so really easy. Oh, yeah, regulator. Oh, yeah, 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 and it's in the first one. Right behind me. All right, everybody, take care. Well, the meter thing. Right. 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 See you in the lighter. Hi, everybody. So, uh, Riverside meeting next week. Just the Robot meeting in Riverside. Yeah. 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 Ye
uh, using my at home, I have this uh, uh, capture system going um, at the on my server that can capture everything we're saying here. And uh, if I can get this to behave, um, uh, you'll see that. Why is <laughs> you got an error there for message? Is there a message? Yeah, it says reload. Where is that? Oh, there. Uh, why is this so hard to? Okay, so um, yeah, let me delete this. So the Cooper is a uh, he, you know, I have his description of him here, what he looks like and who he is. This is your basic bio, and um, uh, this is what's fed into the to chat GP. So Cooper is powered by chat GPT, uh, and uh. This is sort of his description, and then he he's uh, he's lip synced animation and all that stuff. Uh, so this time I focused on all right. I want to add to the bottom of this our whole um, uh, essentially um, the everything we said here today. So then I can ask him, what did you think of our meeting? Okay, and so um, with at, at, here I'll show you the Reva stuff briefly. At the Reva. Um, when you run it, uh, so this is running at home. Uh, I'm sending every all of everything I say, everything everybody says here is going back to the server and getting uh, sent back as text. So, and it's pretty accurate. And it's going through this. The, I brought uh, along the um, uh, the microphone array called the ReSpeaker 2.0, which does a much better job than a simple. Uh, microphone uh, out of your la laptop internal microphone. This has got four microphones. It's got noise cancellation. It's got far field um, uh, analysis uh, or capability, like like those uh, different products from Amazon Echo and and uh, Google as well that have them. So this is I figured. Oh, let's plug that in, and then it can hear much better and more accurately. You can see it's pretty accurate what it's saying. Of course, I'm really close. It was even doing that for everybody else. Um, so I'll, uh, and then when I when I finished, I stop this, and it puts that all into a file. Um, and uh, in the, actually, the uh, let's see the Cooper directory. So if we go. So in here, in the human saved. So uh, we've collected uh, the meeting transcript is 68K. So here's the beginning. So it's 10 o'clock. Let's begin the July meeting of Robotics Society of Southern California. Now, sometimes it's not going to get the right word, uh, even with <laughs> this advanced technology. But, um, you know, since I'm asking, I'm going to ask, what I'm going to do is uh, take all of this. This is 68K. Um, you can't fit that in a chat GPT in, uh, you know, submission. You have to, it has to be lower than essentially 16K or even, well, it has to be lower than 16K with the response and the, um, the question. So I'm lowering it to um, much lower by taking this text. And you can see this the whole thing is here. Taking this text and asking GPT 3.5 to summarize it. Um, so here's part of your talk, probably. Uh, you know, your bigger paper with a lot of rollers misaligned, it goes. Oh, that might be less right there. <laughs> but anyway, so sometimes, um, so sometimes this may get the wrong words, but hopefully overall it uh, gets enough of the sense of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote some script. So right, we're doing this live here. We, that's the text that it collected. And so the next step is to go, um, so I wrote some, I wrote this code here, uh, this system or this, to use uh, chat GPT, break that into chunks. Uh, and I call it chatbot memory. So it's gonna do is it takes that huge file Puts, takes chunks of it, sends it to chat GPT and says, summarize this and output three, you know, 
a few thousand words for that, for instance. And so I send in 12,000 tokens or where, uh, about 10,000 or 9,000 words or something. And I say, give me back one third They're like that or, or low or higher, depending on how much. But so I'm saying, um, you know, bring, give me back uh, a, a percentage of that, say one third as a summary. And then I send the next chunk. So then I combine all those chunk summaries, put it into a new file. And so that's, it's not very much code. I just hobbled it together as we were having our meeting. And um, so, it, and it, for instance, it costs about five cents to do, send 16K uh, using what's called the GPT 3.5 16K input model. You can actually upload 12K and get back uh, 4K, you know, basically for a total of 16. And that costs about five cents every each time you do that. But that's like, it's a lot of data. You don't need me to do that very often anyway. Um, so I'll show you how that runs. That So that's right here. Um, sorry, hold on a sec. Let me get to the right. Yeah, it should be. Uh, or I guess I've been running it from here. So this thing has a shell. Um, let me just go smaller again. Uh, whatever I'll do it in the other one. So chatbot memory. Um, so from here, I'll make this bigger. So bigger. So this is program chatbot memory. So I run this Python chatbot memory. And so this is loading it in. It's 15,900 tokens, chunk count three. Uh, it divides it up. Now it's sending it, uh, it's gonna send it off to, it's going over the internet now to uh, chat GPT servers. It's uh, telling, telling it, um, please summarize in, uh, I can't see, oops. There's always screen problems. Let me make this really big. Yeah, see that it says like 1,956 words. Um, or yeah, 1,900, 1,400. So I'm trying to, now it doesn't always obey that number, but that's what I'm trying to get it to do. So uh, hopefully it does. So that finished now. And so now if we go to uh, my text editor, um yeah that's sort of windows so let's let's get rid of this thing this um how do i get rid of this join i don't want to join audio okay so now um uh this is that same file i was looking at before and you can see the beginning is the system pretend you are a man by a cooper um and uh I don't actually, we don't need this part. So here, just get rid of that. So the part we just added is this user, the meeting transcript above. Well, that's the, we can kind of delete this, I guess. This the meeting transcript doesn't have to be above, but um, the meeting transcript documents, because it was, that's how I phrased it. So this is the July meeting of the Rotary Society of Southern California. The meeting begins at 10 o'clock, blah, blah, blah. So here's all of the, and it, People were saying it's a little bit troublesome to get it to produce thousands of words, but this came out a pretty good amount. So now, um, so you can see, yeah, this is a good summary, hopefully. And what we can do is now this will feed into Cooper. Uh, Cooper will read this whole thing and we can ask him what he thought. And because he reads this chat log. So let's go ahead and bring up Cooper then uh, again, now that he's ready to read in. That voice recognition, can it understand multiple people? In transcript, you had like just 
text without. Uh, no, it's just it's just all one person right now. Uh, the the Riva can do that offline, uh, but oh, I have to. Um, oh, we've got to deal maybe, with the audio situation. Let me mute this one. Now I can um, change my audio output to the. Um, okay, want to do that? If that if that would help you, but then and then I can mute this and use your. Okay, why don't you, yeah, well, let's do that then. Hello. There you go. Okay. Oh, but that's. Um, you got two mics. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You know, I can do it. I. Hello. I'm not going to audio. Sound is coming up. One of the biggest problems I have to come. I have to come here like an hour early to figure out how to do all this stuff uh, really properly. I don't even know how to. Turn off the. I don't want to turn off my audio now. The other, yeah, because. All right, I can keep my volume very low. Maybe. Will that help? Or. Or maybe turn. I can turn my. Uh, my microphone low. I'm gonna need it. I guess I just leave it muted. Never mind. So, um, what you can do is, uh, oh no, I have to unjoin it. Is there any way to turn? I like to. Oh, leave computer audio. Okay, there we go. So, this is also a thing that's difficult to set up. What I generally have to do is, um, Cooper uses the. Uh, so I have to use this thing called AI. Um, oh shoot, I'll have to turn on the O. I don't even know. So the re-speaker will be the input and then the output is the noise canceling output. Let's see if that works. I'm not sure it will. No, no sound. Um, okay, how do I do that before I 
Because if I output to the speaker, then we get a problem, right? No, not not now. No, no. Crank up your volume. Yeah, it's a... Hi again. I'm ready to resume our conversation from where we left off last time. Can you hear me, Cooper? <laughs> He's listening. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I can hear you. How can I assist you today? I wanted to ask you what you thought of our meeting today, that uh, the transcript above. Oh. oh, I'm sorry if there was any confusion, but as an AI language model, I don't have access to real time or previous conversations. I don't have the ability to remember specific interactions or recall previous conversations. However, I'm here to chat with you and discuss any topics you'd like to talk about. Could you summarize what happened today? Let me start over. Uh, how do we, it's just a matter of phrasing it right. Um, I'm going to just say, like, what, what did I discuss or something? Ask him what about Walt's work? Right there. <laughs> about the chat log. Yeah, it should just. Hi again. I'm ready to resume our conversation from where we left off last time. What have I been telling you? I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I don't have the capability to remember past conversations or personal details. What have we been talking about today? Oh, it's not working. <laughs> I'll ask about what. Well, let's try something else. We haven't discussed any specific topics yet. I don't think we got the file. So when you submitted that, you submitted it under your character description, right? Um, well, it's it's not it's the uh, not the character description. That's called system. Uh, the syst like it's called the system prompt, and then um, it does say chat log here. Maybe there's a problem loading this much data in, and then there's like a uh, system, and then user. Um, like it should be otherwise not working. That one goes. Well, I, this is the first time really I've tried this. So this is like, I mean, as far as, but system, you, so then what we added, we add the full transcript um, below. Um, it should be loading that transcript because it knows it's saying, you know, I'm, let's continue basically. That means it's loading. The, uh, the transcript. Normally, that transcript is Hi, just again. what you talk I'm to ready him. To resume our conversation from where we left off last time. What did you think of Walt's uh, inventions? <coughs> Walt's, not Walt's. <laughs> now I'm having a uh, 
as an AI language model. Okay. I'm just asking to summarize. Hi again. I'm ready to resume our conversation from where we left off last time. Can you summarize what I said before? Uh, yeah, something's not working. Maybe it's because it's not enough. Uh, I apologize, but I am unable to remember or summarize our previous conversations. Maybe it's because he didn't get the file. The file should be loading, but um, because he's it's taking him a while. Maybe it just takes longer for him to absorb it. It may yeah. be that I have to say I may have to say user every um for every sentence here because uh. Let's remove a couple. Try to give the same paragraph. Just say one paragraph there and just use that one paragraph. Okay, <laughs> you're thinking it's like um, too much. And there is else. something, you know, what is ser, not user? Is it correct? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I got it. What was that? Oh, error. Oh, my, my. I, I'm just typing this in here, yeah. trying to get this to. Uh, like, uh, yeah, it, it should, these should all be going in as entries, but you know, maybe it hit some kind of uh, limit of size wise uh, as far as each one. Well, there were so some just... words that came up that weren't valid, like on the name like Martina or something. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's got some wrong words in there that are vowels or verbs that are wrong. <laughs> well, that wouldn't throw, that wouldn't oh. prevent it from working at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, let me just do um, a few of these. I don't want to. Oh, there's not that many. Let's see if this helps. Or maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. I should try to. Um, yeah, try so you to see how it's doing this here. It just added this. Oh, so it's reading this file. It's writing the file. You know, yeah, it depends. It reads it too. It has to, it reads it, but maybe. Um, well, let's see if this works. And if not, I'll just divide the file and just into half or to just a few paragraphs. Hi again. I'm ready to resume our conversation from where we left off last time. So what did you think of the meeting we just had, Cooper? Okay, it's working. As a member of the Robotics Society, I found the meeting quite interesting. Martina's talk on his great creations and demonstrations must have been really exciting, especially with the big Dropbox for the demo. I'm always fascinated by the innovative projects that fellow robotics enthusiasts come up with. Levon Trash's discussion on supply chain issues in hobby electronics is also an important topic to consider, mm -hmm. as it can impact our ability to source components and materials for our projects. What was your favorite part of Walt's talk? Uh, it's he's saying waltz. Try to because, because you don't have. Oh, I'm sorry for the there. confusion. But as an AI language Once model, I don't have personal experiences or attend meetings. I'm here to provide information and help with any questions you may have. Uh, what did you think of Steve's talk? Oh, yeah, because you have only user, you don't have Steve. No, no, user is everybody. I could change. I'm sorry, but I don't user have any information everybody. about Steve's talk since you mentioned Martina and Levon and oh, the speaker. He, he, he didn't get the names wrong. About, about, about what kind of hardware was discussed today? <laughs> huh. 
Uh, well, he's kind of off on a. Thank you for providing the name, Rob. I apologize for the confusion earlier. Now that I have the correct information, <laughs> I can confidently say that Rob's talk was very insightful. <laughs> Could you please provide some details about what Rob discussed? I'm curious to learn more. Could you summarize the meeting we had from the above comments? Certainly. From the comments above, it seems that the meeting was held in July and was led by Martina, a member of the Robotics Society Southern California. Two talks were scheduled for the meeting. Martina presented a talk about his great creations and demonstrations, showcasing his impressive projects. He even brought a big drop box for the demo, which I imagine was quite exciting to see. Martina's oh, talk must have been full of innovative ideas and inspiration oh, for fellow robotics oh. enthusiasts. <laughs> what did you want to? I can mute him now, but what did you want to ask? Say, uh, what hardware did we discuss? I don't know. Yeah, that's right. yeah, that's what hardware did we discuss? Uh, maybe I have to break it up more into more users. I apologize for any confusion, but based on the information provided, we did not specifically discuss any hardware during the meeting. The meeting was primarily focused on the presentations by Martina and Levon, where Martina showcased his great creations and Levon discussed supply chain issues in hobby electronics. There might have been other discussions or topics brought up during the meeting, but they were not mentioned in our previous conversation. Oh. You have to say the yeah. meeting, I think. Oh. So hold on. What hardware did we discuss in the meeting? Huh. I guess he doesn't get it. What happened after he generates output? So like between we see text on screen and he starts talking. Well, that's the whole like animation. Kitchen. That's the animation seconds. of the mouth. It has to send up the entire sound to a, a server. Oh, yes, it sends to online. On, yeah, it sends to online. If I did, it wouldn't be possible on this computer anyway. Okay, got it. Um, but yeah, it, you got the name wrong of a couple of people. But uh, where did you get Martina? Yeah, I, I don't know, but that's. <laughs> but it is in here yeah martina uh, well that's in here and it's probably even in the original one he, uh, he might have actually with my resume that's oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> see, it doesn't do as well with names i guess right um <laughs> See, you know, what's frustrating is the data is here. It's just a matter of time you <laughs> yeah, ask the yeah. right question so, so that he doesn't go into that I'm not a, um, you know. So it, what you can do is <laughs> do a, a search and replace and put search for Martina and replace it with Steve. Uh, yeah, you could do that. Let's get back to the, at the end of the meeting, the participant. Okay, so that was the. This was the, um, oh yeah, so you're saying go up. You do a control F? Or like control H on you know, this one. Oh. Martina, Steve, you, yeah. you think that was the? Yeah. And replace all. Okay, that's better. And what was the, it had like leave on or something? Yeah, leave on. <laughs> And leave on trash. <laughs> <laughs> that was Trish. And oh, was, the Trish. That's right. Trish. <laughs> Steve's friend? Oh, no, that's we we might have replaced the wrong one. I don't know. Dropbox was Drawbox. Drawbox. It will take a while to fix that. Was... <laughs> yeah, Drawbox. I'm not sure what it was. Drawbox. So leave. Let's see. Did they say leave on? Oh, that's only mentioned once. 
Oh, you said we had two speakers. Um, yeah, what was uh, oh, Martina? The meeting begins at 10 o'clock with Steve leading the discussion. No, 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 it wasn't Steve, it was you. So I know, that, but he thinks that the entire thing. Was oh, me. Ben Martina is like, yeah, it's Martina is you. Yeah, oh, and, yeah. Him. <laughs> and him. He thought that I did the entire thing because. Oh, so this I part. Started off. Oh, that's interesting. Now, yeah, first Steve presents. This could be Ben, Ben leading the discussion. As in, you know why it said Dropbox? Because Dropbox is not in a, a dictionary anywhere, so yeah. it used the word that it yeah. recognized. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm still figuring out like how often do, you, do I need to put the user? Well, user should work for once. These are all one sentences, right? So I put user for every one of these. So that should be correct. Uh, yeah. Overall, the meeting transcript by the size of various projects. It probably got rid of a lot of important information, but. Um, Uh, yeah, well, try one more. The thing is that you could say like, what the user is is me. So, or so as far as he's concerned. So you could say, what did I talk about? But or um, what was my meeting? What summarized my meeting? I again. I'm ready to resume our conversation from where we left off last time. Could you summarize my meeting? I guess that's the same thing, but... Of course, the meeting took place in July and was held by the Robotics Society of Southern California. Ben, a member of the society, led the discussion as the meeting began at 10 o'clock. There were two scheduled talks for the meeting. The first talk was given by Steve, who shared about his great creations and demonstrations. He brought a big drawbot for a live demo. What was your favorite part? As an AI language model, I don't have preferences or personal experiences, so I don't have a favorite part. However, I can imagine that the demonstration of the big drawbot by Steve would have been quite exciting and engaging for the attendees. What did you like about the second talk? Okay, so we fill in track as far as you could place the um, wall. Since I am an AI language model, I don't have I'm, personal opinions. I'm trying to suppress that. However, I can appreciate that discussing supply chain issues in hobby electronics, as Levon Trash did in the second talk, <laughs> would be valuable for members of the Robotics Society. Exploring challenges related to the availability and sourcing of components can help the community better understand the complexities involved in their projects and potentially find solutions collectively. Was any particular microcontrollers or hardware mentioned? Right, maybe those got filtered out in my summer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, you get the meeting yeah. transcript that up. provides specific details about the microcontrollers or hardware mentioned during the talks. However, it's common for discussions in robotics and hobby electronics to involve popular microcontrollers such as Arduino, Raspberry Pi, or 32 Spanish Pesetas. Brought up during the talks or discussed amongst the members of the robotics society. 
Well, thank you, Cooper. Uh, we'll see you next time. I thought AI could doesn't have an opinion or can't have an opinion. Yeah, but I made it. I, I oh. I'm structuring it so that it says you do it, pretend you do have an opinion. You're welcome. Oh. It was great talking with you. I look forward to our next conversation. <laughs> You know, all the facial and squinting or different things, is that all something? How does it know when to do those? Well, that, that, that's uh, that currently up? that's a loop. If you thought oh. you saw anything, it's oh. simply a loop. Uh, but there uh, apparently there is a way to get back emotional state feedback from uh, GPT-4 maybe, or, or someone said there is. Mm -hmm. And my animation... Or this animation thing ha has an ability to uh, to change to different emotional sort of uh, slight slightly emotional looks like angry, happy, sad. So I could try that, but I haven't. That's too. That's a bit further down the line to get that working. Um, but yeah, you could do that. But what you're seeing there is a is a motion cap. I think it's motion cap or hand animated um, loop. And uh, so Thomas said, oh, he looks kind of anxious most of the time or, you know, and he keeps doing his hand like this, but. Um, looks like he was drunk to me. <laughs> drunk? Yeah, that too. That comes out too sometimes. But there was even a drunker one where it was like, like this. And I was like, oh, that's terrible. It was from some late, it was, a, it's interesting. If you apply a, a female woman's anim animation that looks good on a woman, then you apply it to the man, it looks strange. It looks yeah. like, yeah, that's a. Woman, a man mimicking a woman, kind of. Yep. But anyway, uh, so um, yeah, that's down. That's the next step okay. is to bring in, in, or to bring in more animations, like more different idle loop, different loops okay. and stuff. But you know, it's a whole bunch of work to, uh, you know, to do make it better and better like that. But, but ninety percent of the conversation, it did grasp it correctly. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you're, that was pretty impressive. You are impressed, even though I just popped it together. <laughs> Right now, but actually, you address that you probably find linguistically it was about 65 percent or so. <laughs> it's just it's really hard because anytime you use a neural net or any form of weighted averaging to pick words or to pick some object out of the group, there is going to be an error rate. The error rate depends on the training that you put into it and what the procedure was that went before it because it averages the inputs in order to establish what the, the line of process is. So it's like PRML for signal processing, or well, like when we look at the at the neural nets, what you get is a percentage of match. And so yeah. when it gets something that it doesn't have any actual match for, it will give a percentage of match to the closest words it can find. And then that's what it plugs in. So especially, I think proper names are going to give it a really hard time because if it doesn't have that name in its repertoire, it's going to come up with something that it thinks is the closest. Yeah, you're, you're talking, see that there's a lot of technologies going on here. There's that, that whole Reva thing I'm running is trying to uh, uh, yep. listen to everybody who's coming over the, uh, over the speaker or in the room. The in the room people, it does a good job. But that for normal conversation, but then proper names come in, and um, <laughs> you know this isn't like a Google quality one. This is one I can run at home. Yeah. Uh, it's been made by Nvidia, but it's not like the pro pro. It's free, you know. Even with the Google one, you still have the same issues because it's just nothing has the full yeah base of human experience, and we. For all of our wet work, we do weird associations that allow us to get the things that are really hard to replicate with just digital math. Yeah, sometimes yeah. even we get it wrong. Yeah, yeah. sometimes we get it. You, you know, Humans but, are about 70%. Oh, oh, is that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so 65 isn't that bad then. That's <laughs> not. <laughs> That's that's why when you go to a really good professor or a teacher, when he starts out the course, he tells you what he's going to teach you. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then he tells you what he's got to tell you, and then at the end he summarizes and tell you what he told you. Oh, so that's very related to what I'm trying to do here. Really. Yeah, because but, that's we we used to say, tell them what you got to tell them, tell them what you told them, and yeah, that's a very <laughs> common thing. But yeah, they're not only see so this technology. First of all, trying to hear everybody, it gets some of that wrong. 
then I can't fit all of that. Yep. It's too much to fit in one inquiry. So I have to summarize that and I have to do it in chunks. And then I have to use the summary to then send and directly. If, and if the chunk isn't, <laughs> if, the, if the continuity doesn't go smoothly across the chunk, you get abrupt changes in what it perceives as was said. Yeah, and that's that's actually not an easy thing to deal with. Uh, but yeah, and then so you've got this AI model summarizing. So then it's also going to do sixty five percent. So then it's sixty five percent of sixty five percent. That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty soon you're yeah you you lose a lot of oh that's like the game of telephone with the kids you used to do in kindergarten. This guy this thing has to do telephone every time it goes from one AI to another. Yeah, and it doesn't have any memory or continuity. And that makes it even harder. Yeah, well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sort of artificially give it memory <laughs> by compressing the information and then, and then giving it to it as a, like I just said that earlier. That's what I'm, so anyway, but thank you for your patience. <laughs> it's fun though. Maybe I'll, I'll be able to improve it. <laughs> That's really good, Jen. Thanks. So thank you. Thank thank you. you. The, other, the other thing that's really disturbing a lot of these models is because they're scraping all this stuff off the internet. And so, so they're getting people with, like, if you just work with the United States, right, you have this, we're a polyglot nation, and we have all these people 